sports activity. We're looking forward to top-notch football game today between the Scarlet Knights and the Mountaineers. Temperature 38 degrees, humidity 65 percent, not much of a win. The outlook is cloudy and cold. Here's a look at the crowd this afternoon, bundled up for this football game. This rivalry dates back to 1916. The Mountaineers lead the series 7-1-2. Last year, West Virginia victorious at the Meadowlands by a final score of 44-17. The only Rutgers victory was in 1921 at Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights come in today with a record of 3-6. The Mountaineers rank 15th in the nation. They are 7-2. And they have played a couple of common opponents, namely Boston College and Penn State. Rutgers lost to both. West Virginia victorious over Boston College, but losing to a longtime nemesis, Penn State, by 18 points. Well, a nice brisk day here in West Virginia, and we have a, uh, a great view up here, don't we, Bruce? Boy, you could see out with... What's that song about uh, near heaven? How does that line go? From almost the, heaven. Almost heaven, that's and right. boy, we're, we're almost there. I'll tell you, that's how high we are. We're ready to go, and Tom Angstadt starts the game off, kicks off for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. It's handled by number one, Gary Mullen. Mullen's back near the 20-yard line, and that is all. And West Virginia will start first and 10 near their own 20-yard line. And they are led, of course, by their All-American candidate quarterback, Jeff Hostetler, a 6'3", 212-pound senior starting at tailback is Pat Randolph this afternoon. Fullback is Ron Wolfley and Wayne Brown and the dangerous Rich Holland are the wide receiver. The offensive line for West Virginia, there's a good look at it. The left guard is Scott Barrow. He's a good one. And the left tackle, Brian Jowdriak, he is another one to watch. He's 6'7", 265 pounds, and just a sophomore. Penalty will be assessed against the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. A dead ball foul, personal foul against Rutgers. So West Virginia, instead of starting from their 20, starts from the 35. First and 10 for the Mountaineers from the 35. I formation, they are a multiple offensive team. And on first down, a good hit in the backfield. Pat Randolph got the call, and Dan Errico came up to make the tackle. Rutgers, five-man defensive front. Jeff Cardilla out with a knee injury for the rest of the season. So the nose guard is now Bill Bester and a left tackle, Tony Sagmilla. Linebackers and two good ones, Jim Dumont and Tyrone Stowe. And the deep backs are Danny Errico, Bill Houston, Carl Howard, and Harold Bush Young. Second down, 12 yards to go for the Mountaineers from their own 34-yard line. Hostetler hands to Randolph, and he goes nowhere. So two plays, Sam, and Rutgers defensively has held West Virginia so far. Well, we've heard a great deal about Jeff Hostetler, the uh, Virginia, West Virginia quarterback, but they do have a balanced attack. They run the ball oh, almost two to, two to one as often as they pass. In fact, in talking to uh, Don Nealon yesterday, he said he would prefer, if he had his brothers, to run about 50 times and pass 30 times in the average ball game where you run 80 offensive plays. Third and 12, Hostetler's first pass of the afternoon. Look, Fires has an end complete at the 45-yard line. It's his tight end, Rob Bennett. And it is very close to a West Virginia first down. Bob Dumont, Dan Errico made the tackle. And there's Bennett on the season, 15 catches. You see the Rutgers defense dropping back. They know that he's got to complete a pass for at least 10 yards. They're giving him 7 or 8 yards. They may have given him just a little bit too much on this play as he does get the first down. Uh, Bob Bennett is a guy that uh, Coach Nealon was very high on. He says he's his best offensive lineman if you can sit at the tight end as part of the offensive line. It is good for a first down. Straight gale to Ron Wolfley, the fullback, and Wolfley gets maybe a yard. Wolfley is a junior from Orchard Park, New York, and on the season, averaging 4.4 yards per carry. Hostletter throwing much shorter this year, and this is normally the trend. With experienced quarterbacks on good football teams, you don't want to throw the pass, you don't want to force, you don't want to press. His completion percentage has gone up from 48% last year to 57% this year. Second down, nine yards to go for the Mountaineers from their own 47-yard line. Hostetler, play action pass, has time, look, fires, and it's incomplete. And a flag is thrown, a late flag. Number one, Gary Mullen, was interfered with by Carl Howard. And a flag thrown down at the Rutgers 40-yard line, a late flag at that. 
I believe you'll see Carl Howard, and there's no doubt that there is interference on the play. Receiver goes downfield, hooks up. The ball should be there right now. A little late in delivering the football. The only mistake that Howard made was that left arm. He wrapped it around the receiver as he went to get a piece of the football. Had he tucked that arm in or not touched the receiver, it was pretty good coverage. Penalty against the Scarlet Knights, so West Virginia has a first and ten at the Rutgers 40-yard line. Out of the power eye formation again, the tailback is Pat Randolph. And the give is to Randolph, and he is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Good pressure by Bob Dumont, and so far today, Rutgers has guarded against the run extremely well. West Virginia has not been overwhelming in running with the football. They've got considerable yardage on the ground, but they've been averaging just 3.2 yards per rush, which really is not that impressive. You've got to be well up over four or close to five in order to really be effective with your running game. Second down and ten. Ball still at the 40. Now the tight end Bennett sets tight to the left. Twins to the left side of the field. The hot settler rolls. Hot settler with time. Throwing deep for Mullen. He has him at the six. Mullen breaks the tackle, and he's in for a touchdown. Fine move by Gary Mullen, and the Mountaineers have struck quickly. Well, that's the thing that Jeff Hostetler does very well, runs with a football. He's run 71 times this year, and of course, when your quarterback scrambles or rolls out like that, puts pressure on the linebackers and the deep backs. You know, where is the quarterback? What do I do now? Is he going to run? They take their eyes off the receiver, which they're not supposed to do. And incidentally, those linebackers are not supposed to leave coverage until the quarterback crosses the line of scrimmage. He sees his receiver deep downfield. And the ball right, well, slightly underthrown, but Erico just wasn't close enough to recover in time. Paul Woodside on for the point after attempt. It's up. It is perfect. He is automatic. Woodside has now hit 50 consecutive extra points in his career at West Virginia. 12 minutes and 20 seconds left in the first quarter of play. West Virginia on the scoreboard first. They lead 7-0. Near field in Morgantown, West Virginia. We're somewhere in those couple of bays there, and West Virginia didn't take long, Sam, to get on the scoreboard. No, and the two Rutgers penalties didn't help especially the one on the pass interference, which gave them uh, a first down. And a short kickoff out of bounds. The penalty will be assessed against West Virginia. It will be a five-yard penalty, and they will try it again. Hostetler hit his 11th touchdown pass of the season, and you compare that with six interceptions, and that's a nice statistic. Yeah, that's the key, really. Uh, you, you look at the quarterback's completion percentage, his yardage, of course, is very important. And then probably the most important factor, the number of interceptions, the turnovers, the mistakes. And as we indicated, those two penalties, one on the opening kickoff and the other on that third and long situation by Carl Howard, which certainly was the primary reason for that uh, West Virginia touchdown. That and a good play by Hostetler when he hit uh, Mullen. The West Virginia scoring drive, it was very quick. It took only two minutes and 35 seconds, six plays. 64 yards and a 40-yard touchdown pass to Gary Mullen, his second TD reception of the season. The strength probably, well, they have a balanced team, really the defense and the offense for West Virginia. If you had to pick a strength, it might be their defensive unit. Coming into today's game, they rank number 10th in the nation against the rush, allowing just 97.8 yards per game. Uh, totally, they rank 17th in the nation, allowing 294 yards, so about 200 passing yards per game. Junior Paul Woodside kicks off. James Shedneck of Rutgers has it at the five-yard line. Shedneck to the 20, and he is wrapped up at the 22-yard line, and that's where the Scarlet Knights will put it in 10, put it into play, I should say. First and 10 from their own 22-yard line. Let's check the Rutgers offensive unit. Jack LaFrary will start at quarterback again this afternoon. Albert Smith will start at tailback. Vernon Williams the fullback, and Pendergrass and Baker are the wide receivers. The offensive line with Joe DiGiulio, the outstanding center. John Owens and Joe Panucci handle the right side. Alan Andrews the starting tight end, and Andrews on the season leading Rutgers in reception. We have an injured West Virginia player on the field at about the 39-yard line, hence the delay for just a couple of moments. Of course, the Rutgers offensive unit has to decide what they're going to try to do. Are they going to try to run with the football? Are they going to try to throw the football? We indicated that they're tough against the run, 
But then again, you've got to consider whether the Rutgers offensive line can give the Prairie pass protection and if he can deliver the football. While we have this opportunity, we'll check the West Virginia defensive alignment. A three-man front. The nose guard is Dave Oblack, and the tackles are Merritt and Walters. Two outside linebackers, Hathaway and Hughes, and the inside linebackers are Dave Preston, Preston and Derek Christian. He backs, watch for number 44, Tim Agee. He's an All-American candidate, 5'11", 175 pounds, leads the team in both tackles and interceptions. He's a good one. The average weights uh, are pretty much the same. Each offensive unit, each offensive offensive line outweighs the front seven of the opposing team by about 24 pounds. Uh, the difference, I think, is West Virginia has a little more speed, a little more quickness. I would expect Rutgers to come out and to try to establish that running attack, say, take some of the pressure off the Prairie. If they're going to run against a quick, agile defense, you run right at them from tackle to tackle. Fred Smalls, the injured player, off the field under his own strength. Rutgers has it first and 10 from the 22. Out of the I formation, and Albert Smith is the tailback. The Prairie hands to Smith on first down, and Albert... Gets a yard or so. Appeared to be a loose ball on the play, but apparently the play was blown dead. Well, everybody's hitting, including the official. He was hit, he was knocked to the ground, but he was up and he was right in there, ready to hit again. They, they came out running right up the middle. I think you, when you have active people like that, not especially big people, you run right at them. Not much success on that first down play. Wide receivers, both sides of the field. The Prairie looking at a second down and nine from the 23. The Prairie with a play action pass. Throws it across the middle. It's complete to Len Beleza. And Beleza is up near the 29 yard line. Ed Hughes made the tackle for West Virginia. And when Rutgers needs a big play, Len Beleza is usually there. Yeah, he has been extremely effective over the last few weeks. Last week he carried the ball 12 times to 76 yards. He was most of their offense against Cincinnati. And on the season, Sam, an impressive 5.7 yards per carry. He's a good running back. Follows his blockers well, and he's got adequate speed. Third down, four. Rutgers, 29-yard line. McFerry, straight drop back. Has time. Fires incomplete. Andrew Baker and Boris Pendergrass were both down the field. Pendergrass, the closest man to the football, but it's an incompleted pass, and Rutgers will have to punch on fourth down. Anticipating the pass, West Virginia was blitzing. They blitzed their strong safety. Anthony Daniels, also a good one, because the big hitter back there, as you mentioned, was Tim Agee, who leads the team in both tackles and interceptions. Gary Liska into the ball game to punt for Rutgers. Dropping back deep for West Virginia, Mike Scott and Willie Drury. And Drury is number 48, and he can scamper. Liska to Drury, and he'll call for a fair catch and make it at the 39-yard line. And that's where the Mountaineers will have it first and 10. We have 10 minutes and 50 seconds left in the first quarter of play. West Virginia leads it 7-0. Seven nothing West Virginia. The Mountaineers have it first and ten from their own 38-yard line. Hostetler hands on first down to Pat Randolph, and Randolph gets to the 41-yard line. Jim Dumont, Harold Young came up to make the stop. Once again, a good effort on the part of the Rutgers defense. You know, you go into every game with the intent of taking away something from the opposing team. The Rutgers defense has to decide what they want to stop. The run or the pass. I don't think you can take away everything from West Virginia. Obviously, they've decided to take away the run today. They've been very effective against the run. Quinn's to the right side of the field. That's number one, Gary Mullen, number 88, Rick Collins. And there's all sides, of course, of flags on the play, off the snap. Uh, dead ball foul called by our referee this afternoon, and that's Thomas Dammer. An illegal procedure against the Mountaineers. And of course, Don Nealon indicated to us yesterday that he likes to have a balanced offense, but I've got to believe that the West Virginia coaching staff and team feel that they perhaps have better personnel than Rutgers and that they can outmuscle them a little bit and control the football on the ground. So I think it's wise for Rutgers to try to stop that running attack and put some pressure on the quarterback. So it's second and 13 for the Mountaineers from the 36-yard line. Again, they send two wide receivers to the right out of the power-eye formation. 
Hostetler keeps it on the ground, hands to Randolph, and he is stacked up after picking up maybe a yard. And it's Jimmy Dumont, the All-American candidate from Levittown, Pennsylvania, who came up to read the play. And yesterday in our conversation with Don Nealon, the head coach for West Virginia, he indicated he was on the selection committee for the All-America team and that he was going to vote the Jim Dumont. I guess he's not going to be uh, dissuaded from that opinion after today's game because Dumont has been in on most of the action in this uh, first quarter. He said he's the best defensive football player that they'll see all season long, which is quite a compliment. They're down and long, and Hostetler rolls to his right. Still looking. Hostetler in trouble and scampers out of the pocket. He's to the 45. He has first down yardage, and he is tripped up at the 45-yard line of Rutgers. Danny Erico made the tackle for the Scarlet Knights, but there's a look at Hostetler's versatility as he carries the football and picks up first down yardage. Of course, this puts tremendous pressure on the defense. Not only that, when a quarterback rolls out like this, it destroys your blitz. Where do you blitz from? And, of course, you can get burned when you're blitzing. Everyone is playing it well to this point. Of course, Bob Dumont fell down, as you saw, number 35. They're putting pressure on him. He should have been tackled right there. Okay, that was the mistake. And now, of course, he goes clear across field for good yardage in the first down before he's brought down by Aguito Houston. Randolph gets the ball in first down, and Harold Young runs him down at the 44 after a pickup of one. Good hustle on the part of the junior from Raleigh, New Jersey, Put Young. Pat Randolph, their best running back, the starting tailback. He had been out for several weeks with a knee injury, and Tom Gray from Somerville, New Jersey, had been uh, seeing a lot of action and starting for West Virginia, but uh, Randolph is bigger and faster than Gray, and they think he's a better back. Second down and nine for the Mountaineers from the 45-yard line. Wide to the left this time, Rick Collins, and in motion, Gary Mullen. Hot Settler to throw. Brings it out for Pat Randolph, it's incomplete. Don Nealon, head coach of West Virginia. Fourth year at the school, his record 31-14. Young man from Canton, Ohio originally, went to Bowling Green with a quarterback there through 1958. And he has been very successful in turning this program Boy, around. Hasn't he? Boy, he's really done a job. When he came here, he didn't have a player on the team that had ever experienced a winning season at West Virginia. First year, he had them at 500, 6 and 6. The next two years, they finished with identical 9 and 3 records and, of course, had bowl bids in both years. Third and 9 at the 45. Hostetler straight drop back. Looking long for Willie Drury. He has him. Touchdown, West Virginia. Willie Drury was wide open, and Hofstetler, before he went down, threw a perfect strike, and the Mountaineers have their second touchdown. Well, Rutgers gamble. They were blitzing everybody on the play, but there still should have been somebody on Willie Drury, who had, uh, had been disappointing for West Virginia up until today's game. You'll see now. Let's see if Stowe comes. Stowe doesn't come, but you'll see number 35, Bob Dumont, who normally drops into coverage. He was blitzing. Stowe was going into that area, but no excuse for Drury being all alone on that play. Either Erico or number two, Harold Young, obviously should have been closer and on coverage. Paul Woodside on for the point after. It's up, and it's perfect. The Mountaineers have struck for a second time in this first quarter, and West Virginia leading Rutgers 14 to nothing. Hostetler throwing the bomb to Willie Drury, who has his second touchdown reception of the season. You're watching Rutgers football on Madison Square Garden Cable Vision. Sam DeLuca back in Morgantown, West Virginia. There's Rutgers head football coach Frank Burns in his 11th season. So far today, he has seen the Mountaineers strike twice for two big touchdowns. And this is just the opposite of what occurred last year. Last year, when they played West Virginia, they played very well for the first 27 minutes of the football game. Uh, they came back, they were down only seven to nothing after 27 minutes. Kickoff handled by James Shedneck at the 10. He breaks a couple of tackles, but goes down at the 18-yard line. And that's where Rutgers will take over first and 10 from their own 18. Sam, when you fall behind this early, by two touchdowns to a superior football team like West Virginia, 
the tendency is always to try to get it back so quickly by putting the ball in the air, but well, in this kind of game, it's so early, you've got to be careful not to do that. This early in the football game, you can't discard your game plan. You've got to stay with the game plan, whatever that was, and I'm sure it was an attempt to, to remain balanced, so they've got to continue to do that. You can't put the pressure on McCrary and have him throw it every time. First down, McCrary rolls to his left. Look, fires, and it is caught by Boris Pendergrass up near the 36-yard line, and good for a Rutgers first down. The last West Virginia scoring drive, once again, they did it very quickly. Six plays, 61 yards. Hostetler, a 45-yard touchdown pass to Willie Drury, and it took less than three minutes. Had to be a lack of communication on that last touchdown pass. Nobody was near the receiver when he caught the football. He can only do that. First and ten, Scarlet Knights, 35-yard line. Baker goes in motion. La Prairie hands off to Vernon Williams. And Williams with some good running room. He's across the 40. Has at least five yards on the play. Jim Merritt, the senior from Holidaysburg, Pennsylvania, made the tackle. Just to uh, recap last year's game and the difference between the two seasons, Rutgers actually was uh, leading 10-7 with 27 minutes gone in the first half. However, in the last three minutes, West Virginia hit two field goals and then dominated the game in the second half. They won 44 to 17. A pickup of five, second down and five. Rutgers at the 40, Albert Smith gets the pitch, looks to turn the corner, but he's forced out of bounds by Mike Scott. And it will bring up a third down and short for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, looking to snap a two game losing streak. And it won't be easy against a team ranked 15th in the nation. Yeah, hard to run outside against West Virginia. They've got good, active linebackers and a rather, well, not undersized, but not a very large front three, but good pursuit from all of them. In fact, they say the, uh, the nose guard, Dave Oblock, the, the co-captain, is listed at 6'3", 230, but we hear he's closer to 210, so not very big as far as nose guards are concerned. Third and two, Rutgers. LaFrary rolls left, throws complete first down. Andrew Baker at the Rutgers 49-yard line. Of course, Baker was the, uh, the player that Don Nealon was concerned about yesterday. Every coach is always concerned about the big play guy or giving up the big play, and that's precisely what Rutgers has given up here in the first half. Two big plays, two quick scores to West Virginia. First down, Scarlet Knights, 49-yard line. Three wide receivers to the left side of the field. The lone setback is Len Beleza. The Prairie keeps it on the ground, and Beleza spins his way to the 46-yard line of West Virginia. So Rutgers beginning to move the ball effectively, Sam, in the air and on the ground. Another nice run. Was it? Was that Len Beleza? No, that's Vernon Williams. Yeah, Vernon Williams, mistake. I thought that last time, because he spun out. It, he appeared to be tackled in the middle of the line, spun out. The linebacker was blitzing from the other side, so there was no pursuit coming over from Dave Preston, and that's why he got very well, good yardage on uh, that first down play. Again, twins to the left side of the field. Second down and call it five for Rutgers at the 46. And the handoff to Vernon Williams. And Williams with a big hole and a first down. At the West Virginia 37-yard line, Steve Hathaway made the tackle. Nice run, but watch the block by number 55, Do uh, Joe DeGilio, the offensive center. Now look how he fires out into number 95. That's not the starter, but look how he stays with him, and even when he spun out, DeGilio was right after him, and of course that's the area that the running back, Williams, hit. Joe DeGilio, the sophomore from Lower Cape May Regional High School in Cape May, New Jersey, is injured. He has played almost every down this season, and he is a vital cog on that offensive line. Boy, along with uh, John Owens, he and Owens have been the two most consistent offensive linemen for Rutgers. Number 95 was Ernie Anderson, the backup nose guard to Dave Oblak, the co-captain and senior who has uh, started for three years for West Virginia. It is cold this afternoon and the Mountaineers getting their hands warmed up before the offensive unit comes back on the field. First and ten, Rutgers continues to move the football at the Mountaineer 37. The Prairie gives the ball to Vernon Williams. Big hole and Williams lunging to the first down marker. Vernon Williams carrying the football well so far in this first quarter of play. Well, we indicated that the defensive line for West Virginia is not very large and the Rutgers offensive line seems to be able to handle them. Watch the offensive center now. He does a good job. That's Oblak back in the football game. 
pulled out the off guard. He breaks to the outside when the linebacker ties himself up on the inside. That was number 50, Matt Smith, who really took himself out of the play. He overreacted. It is good for a Rutgers first down at the 27-yard line. Good running. Glenn Fine is the center in the football game, replacing Joe DiGilio. Fine is a sophomore from Wayne Valley High School in Wayne, New Jersey. He is number 51 in the center of your frame. The Prairie with a long count, hands the ball off to Williams, breaks the tackle, but is then put down. Outstanding job by Glenn Fine now in the football game. He brush, brush blocked the, uh, the nose guard and then goes on and picks up the linebacker. I believe it was number 38, Dave Preston. Watch number 51. Watch Glenn Fine. Brush block. Look how he takes on number 38 and just stays with him. And hey, he's not going to quit. May have got an arm wrapped around number 38, Dave Preston. But a fine effort. Good, good aggressiveness and determination. Second down and 10 for the Scarlet Knights. Single setback this time is Lenny Beleza. Andrew Baker goes in motion. The Prairie rolls to his left. Has a lot of room. Pulls up. Throws. And it's incomplete. Intended for Alan Andrews. But Matt Smith was there to bat it down. Maybe just as well, because I believe he, he didn't have a receiver downfield. Alan Andrews was in the middle of three defenders, and I don't think he had any better chance of coming up with a football than one of those uh, West Virginia defensive people. So Rutgers now looking at a third and ten at the West Virginia 27-yard line. 14-0 West Virginia leads, 4.51 left in the first quarter. Wide to the right side, Andrew Baker, Boris Pendergrass, wide left. Smith back in the ball game. LaFerry to throw on third down. Pops it off complete to Beleza. First down, Rutgers, and Beleza is down to the 10-yard line. It took five blue shirts to finally wrestle down Len Beleza, and Rutgers continues to move the football. Don't press, don't force it, take what the defense gives you. The primary thing that a quarterback must learn, forget about throwing that 40-yard bomb. Just take what's there. Sets up, looks downfield, doesn't see anybody, dumps it off to Beleza over the middle. First down. You can't ask for more than that. Nice play. Watch how Beleza puts down his head and picks up three extra yards on his own. Good back. First and goal. Handoff to Albert Smith. And Smith gets to the four-yard line before Timmy Agee and Anthony Daniels came up to make the tackle. Both are secondary players, and when the running back gets into the secondary, you know he's doing his job. Boy, you know that. And Clement Yudovich pulling out that time at a good block. Uh, DeGilio, we understand, is okay. He will be back in the football game. Rutgers continues to run effectively. Coming into today's game, they had averaged 4.1 yards per carry. We mentioned West Virginia was averaging just 3.2 yards per carry. Full house backfield, second down and four for Rutgers at the four-yard line. Handoff to Smith, touchdown Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights come right back, march down the field, and they're on the scoreboard. Now it's a 14-6 football game, and that must do wonders for the Scarlet Knights' confidence. Watch the offensive center again, Glenn Fine, number 51. I believe he has the key block. Watch how the running back runs behind that block. Stays with the defensive man, and Albert Smith just waltzes in. When a running back goes in that easily, you know the offensive line is doing the job. The defensive player took that side on fine. That's fine. You just stay with him, run fine, and just ride him out. <laughs> nice job, though, wasn't it? Yes. Nice stats point after touchdown is up, and it is good. So Rutgers right back in it. And they were able to move the football effectively against a highly counted West Virginia defense. And with 3.44 left in the first quarter of play, the Scarlet Knights have cut the lead to 14-7 in front of a lot of bundled fans here in Morgantown. Very effective drive. I don't know if Don Nealon had anticipated that uh, perhaps he was going to have a piece of cake today because he took out his nose guard and his co-captain, Dave Oblak, and put in Ernie Anderson, the backup. But if you notice... At the end of that drive, Oblak was back in the football game along with all of the other starters. And he had said yesterday that he has great respect for Frank Burns, that he's thought that every time he's played against Burns, 
Rutgers has had an outstanding uh, offensive game plan, and he knew it was not going to be an easy task to today. Rutgers played West Virginia so effectively last year throughout the first half in the Meadowlands, but then in the second half, the roof caved in, and Hostetler got on track through a couple of touchdown passes to Rich Hollins, who has been quiet so far today. They have been effective running the football from tackle to tackle, relying on the over-aggressiveness or over-reaction of those linebackers and smaller defensive people. Gary Mullen has it and brings it back to the 27-yard line, and that's where Hostetler and company will start first and 10. Jeff Hostetler, the All-American quarterback. He is a senior from Halsapel, Pennsylvania, a transfer from Penn State, and in two years here at West Virginia, has just been something else. The team 16 and 5 under Hostetler. And by the way, Sam, he has a 4-0 academic average in finance. That certainly doesn't hurt matters, does it? Really helps the quarterback. What did the coach, the coach tell us yesterday? He said, he said his greatest strength is his head. He's got a great head on his shoulders. Great give to Ron Wolfley. And he runs it to Tyrone Stowe as he gets to the 30-yard line. That Rutgers scoring drive was an impressive one. They marched straight down the football field, and McCary put the ball up in the air. He also handed off to Williams and Smith. They went 81 yards in 12 plays. It took only four minutes and change, and Albert Smith scored his fifth touchdown of the season. Three minutes, 12 seconds left, first quarter. Mountaineers lead 14-7. In motion goes Wayne Brown, the pitch back to Pat Randolph, and he is stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Lionel Washington made an excellent read on the play, and it will bring up a third down, and a flag is down on the play. Talking about uh, Jeff Hustetler and what his coach Don Nealon said yesterday, he said that Hoss, that's evidently what they call him here in West Virginia, has good vision and has the ability to turn bad plays into good plays. We saw that earlier in the game when he rolled right and then scrambled left for excellent yardage and a first down. Of course, good vision encompasses just about everything. It means that a quarterback can see the entire field, so it indeed may mean that his eyes are good, his peripheral vision is good. I think it also has a lot to do with the ability to read uh, the intelligence quotient that we discussed before, the fact that he can read defenses, knows where to look, and that's probably a combination of things when he says good vision. Holding against West Virginia, declined by Rutgers. It is third and six for the Mountaineers from the 30. Hostetler sets up, has time. Now running out of the pocket, and very close to a first down. I don't know if he made it. Tyrone Stowe came up to meet Jeff Hostetler. Well, there's really nothing you can do when a quarterback does that, when he scrambles out of the pocket. The front three, the people rushing have to get there. The people downfield want to stay in coverage until he crosses the line of scrimmage. Doesn't see anybody. Now, that was uh, number 95, I believe, that really got pinned in. But, of course, you, you can't stay in lanes all the time. You've got to go out of your lane a little bit if you intend to put on a good pass rush. 95. Of course, is Clyde Woodley, the designated pass rusher. Short of a first down, Steve Superick on to punt for the first time today. Hits it to Shedneck. Shedneck at the 28, he's to the 35. And he gets to the 36-yard line. So Rutgers defense held. And now the offense gets excellent field position. As you look at Haas getting the big bundle around him, you've got to take care of your quarterbacks. And that's what the Mountaineers are doing. So Rutgers will have it in first and 10 from their own 36, failing 14-7 in the ball game, a minute 53 left in the first quarter. Talking about Hustetler, some people think he could be the number one quarterback taken in uh, this year's pro draft. The Prairie leads out Rutgers. Vernon Williams, Albert Smith are split. And off. Albert Smith, and Smith twists and turns, and he's up to the 40-yard line. They're using Smith, Sam, from a wing formation, and that time they brought him against the great. Yeah, a little bit slow in developing. Had he gotten there faster and stayed behind Clement Udovich to turn the corner, he would have had good yardage. He elected, probably because he felt he couldn't reach Udovich, to break it to the inside. And not bad yardage, but he would have had more had he followed his offensive pulling guard, Clement Udovich. Well, Joe DiGilio is back in the football game, replacing Glenn Fine. It is second down and six for Rutgers from the 40. Single setback. And that's Vernon Williams. And Williams 
breaks the tackle. Finally runs into Jim Merritt, who was shifted from nose guard to left tackle this year. He's a transfer from the University of Connecticut, number 96. He led the defensive line in tackles last year at 82, and had four sacks this year. Um, Ernie Anderson in at nose guard, Virgilio back in at offensive guard, but if Glenn Pine continues to play as he played at short time, that's the only time we've seen him this year, they'll move him to another position because Virgilio, of course, is also a sophomore. Third down three, Rutgers at the 43-yard line. LaFrey to throw, in trouble, dumps it off to Smith, it's complete, Smith has a first down, or is very, very close. Van Richardson came up to make the stop, give LaFrey credit for getting that pass off, he was under a lot of pressure. And their designated pass rusher from the linebacking spot, number 45, Steve Hathaway, is the man that puts pressure on LaFrey. You'll see there's number 45 hitting LaFrey. As he releases the football, that's Owens out there with a fine block in front of Smith. But uh, Holloway leads the club with 12 sacks. So those are coming on blitzes, and he racked up LaPrairi once again, who has been taking a beating this year. Timeout called on the field. Rutgers is short of a first down. It will be fourth and about two feet. Cold, blustery Morgantown afternoon. It was snowing last evening, and the snow pretty much stopped late in the evening. And nothing really stuck. And this afternoon we're just playing in cold conditions. But there's still a pretty good crowd. This facility holds somewhere in the neighborhood of 55. And somehow, Sam, they managed to get 64 in here one football game. I don't know how they did that. Well, it's not supposed to hold the 55 either. The official capacity is 50,512. And they had over 62,000 for the Pittsburgh game, of course, which is just 60 miles away. Pittsburgh is, anyway. Gary Lisko back in punt formation. Waits for it at his own 30. And we have a flag down on the play. And that is it for the first quarter of play. The score from West Virginia, the Mountaineers 14, the Scarlet Knights 7. We'll be right back. Liska for Rutgers as we begin play in the second quarter with West Virginia leading 14-7. There's the dangerous Willie Drury who's already caught a touchdown pass from Jeff, Jeff Hostetler in the first quarter of play. Liska's punt is short. And it angles over by the far sideline and bounces down near the 26-yard line. And that's West, where West Virginia will start at first down and 10. West Virginia finishes up their season next week against uh, Syracuse. This, of course, is their last home game, and I believe 19 seniors will be participating for the first for the last time here at, uh, at their stadium in West Virginia. Hostetler so far today, two touchdowns. You've got to be able to make the big play if you're a quarterback, and that's exactly what Jeff has done this afternoon. He's thrown only four times, completed three. Hostetler, naked bootleg, rolls to his right, throws complete and up near the 35 yard line goes Ron Wolfley who's the fullback that is his sixth reception of the app of the season and first of the afternoon well nothing more basic than that quarterback rolling out and of course the uh, the back the fullback going through the line and moving in the same direction waiting until he moves between the linebackers quarterback releases the football and injured Rutgers player is down Harry Swain, number 90, freshman from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, down at the Rutgers 25. And he is being looked at. Swain got the start at right tackle after Cordilla went out with an injury. Benchner was moved to nose guard and Swain right tackle. He has played well, too. He's played well, and he's played against uh, perhaps their best interior offensive lineman. We had indicated before that Coach Nealon said that his best lineman was Rob Bennett. Most coaches don't normally consider the tight end as part of the offensive line. Uh, he evidently makes a distinction between the offensive line and the interior offensive line with five people. The best of the interior linemen is Brian George Wiaus. How do you pronounce that, please? Uh, are you trying to set me up? Well, next week, the Owls of Temple fly into Rutgers Stadium for the final of the 1983 football season. Madison Square Garden Cablevision will bring there, will be there to bring you all the action next Saturday night at 10.30 and Sunday morning at 9 
right here in Madison Square Garden Cable Vision. Don't miss the action as the Owls of Temple roll into Rutgers Stadium next weekend. That offensive tackle number 77 is Brian Jorzwia. Second down and short, straight give up the middle. Tony Sagnella made the stop on Ron Wolfley. Wolfley looking for first down yardage. You talk about uh, a tough assignment. George Wiak is 6'7", 260 pounds. Junior, their best interior offensive lineman. And of course, Harry Swain, who was playing on that side, is just a freshman. For Rutgers, he stands 6'4", and weighs about 220 pounds. He has uh, since been replaced. However, we'll get to that in a moment. Twins to the left side of the field. Hostetler pitches back to Pat Randolph, and Randolph is stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Lionel Washington made the stop. It will bring up a second down and about 10. The Rutgers on that last play had Lionel Washington playing over George Wiesek. <laughs> George Wiesek. George Wiesek. You know why? Because it's not spelled that way. See, that's what throws you off, and the spelling is different. Here's a look at Paul Woodside, number three, near side of your picture. He is the outstanding kicker, All-American last year, second string All-American indeed. And he has not missed an extra point ever here in West Virginia. Gary Mullen goes in motion, Hosteller fakes the pitch out, throws across the middle, and it's almost caught by Rob Bennett, the big tight end, who made a great effort in trying to secure the football. But well, he is big, and he utilized all six feet, six inches of that frame as he reached up, got one hand on the football. Had he not been hit, he obviously would have been able to put it away. But you'll see that he is hit here. Pass is thrown extremely high. Well, he had to clear the outstretched arms of Jim Dumont. That's why it was thrown so high. And eventually, Rutgers converges on him, and he is not able to hold on to the football. Third down, 10. West Virginia ball to 37-yard line. Bennett sets tight on the left. Mountaineer, 75% so far today in third down. Hostetler throws a bullet, and it's caught by Rich Holland. That's his first catch of the afternoon, and it's good for a Mountaineer first down. Well, he is their big play guy, not so much because he has outstanding speed, but he has good moves, good hands, and of course he has worked a great deal with Hostetler. The timing is there, as you can see on this play, but really a fine reception. Ball wobbles a little bit, not thrown well, thrown low. He goes in, he, he manages to keep it off the turf. Collins is sixth on the all-time receiving list here at West Virginia. He now has 90 catches for his career. Hostetler back to work on first down. Fires complete to Hollins, and it's good for another first down. Carl Howard made the tackle. Well, as a sophomore, Hollins had 37 catches for 754 yards and six touchdowns. Averaged over 27 yards per catch last year. And you can see why. Now, he does go long. These are considerably long passes. Again, right on target, goes up over the middle. Didn't have to leap. Actually lost a split second as he went up into the air. Had he not leaped, maybe another yard or two on the play. Could have turned up field faster. 38 receptions this year. First and 10 Mountaineers, and they give it back to Pat Randolph. And a freshman from Folsom, Pennsylvania, gets three off the right side. Lionel Washington there to make the stop. I think when you see a receiver go up over the middle like that, like Collins did on that last reception, part of it is he wants to protect the football with his body, assuming that he's going to be hit from the rear. And then I think it's just a natural tendency when you're running over the middle and you expect to be clobbered upon catching the football to sort of tighten up and, you know, tense yourself and thereby leave your feet and you feel more protected in that uh, situation. Second down and eight at the 30. Hand off to Randolph, tries to turn the corner. Jim Zuma knocks the football free, but it's picked up by, guess who, Rich Holland. Good hustle by the senior from Zanesville, Ohio, picking up the football. No, that's 48, Willie Drury, who recovered the football. But the Mountaineers maintain possession. Boy, that could have been a big break for Rutgers last week against Cincinnati. They turned it over seven times. You see Sagnella almost got a piece of him. Lionel Washington almost got a piece of him. Jim Dumont does. But unfortunately, Drury picks it up, and it's still uh, West Virginia's football. Third down, seven. Mountaineers at the Rutgers, 29. Twins to the right. In motion. Or trying to get off the field. That might have been an extra player. 
Hostetler throws, it's caught by Hollins, fakes that one man, and he gets to the 21-yard line, and it is good for a West Virginia first down. Well, Rutgers, I think, has done what they set out to do. They've shut off the running game. West Virginia has just 29 yards running with a football. Randolph, their best rusher, has carried 10 times for just six yards, but Hostetler has hurt them via the pass. Once again, the rollout. Again, trying to put pressure on those linebackers, throwing beyond the linebackers there or in front of them. And he picks up some yards on his own. Their best receiver, Rich Hollins, number 88. First and 10, incidentally, in both receptions and yardage. 21 yard line of Rutgers, Hostetler, quick drop back, just throws it across the middle, it's caught by Hollins, he breaks the tackle and he's down to 13 yard line, Jim Dumont made the tackle, but now Hollins is getting loose, last year got a couple of big TDs against the Scarlet Knights and now going back to work again. And I think it's uh, significant that he doesn't have the blazing speed and yet is widely respected by everybody as a receiver. You just don't have to have the blazing speed. Other things are equally as important. The timing, the ability to run good routes, the ability to outsmart a defender. Those things are just as important as speed. Flag is against West Virginia. Ineligible receiver downfield, that's a loss of down. And I think that's one of the reasons that Frank Burns and his staff are reluctant to give out the times that their players run the 40-yard dash in. Nobody can prejudge. You evaluate a player on what he does on the football field and not in what he runs that 40-yard dash. Second down and 15 off the penalty. Reverse is set up. Gary Mullen looking to cut it back, but Rutgers plays it perfectly. Paul Howard all over Gary Mullen, and it is another loss on the play. It will bring up third down and long. Well, nobody was fooled on that one. I'm sure that West Virginia would like to take that one back. Fakes to number 24. It's uh, Tom Gray. Gray probably should have gotten the football. He would have had some decent yardage on the play. Jim Dumont, once again, a nose for the football. Reacts well, does everything well, doesn't he? He sure does. Third and 20. Ball at the Rutgers 31-yard line. Hostetler back to throw. Sets up. Has time. Throwing long for Holland. Complete. And a first down for West Virginia at the Rutgers 8. Talk about making the big play. Hostetler did it again. Boy, he... He certainly has the ability to make things happen. I believe that Butch Young slips on the play. I don't know if he was trying to get out to the receiver or to come up. There was a shallow man, also someone in front of Young. You may see him trying to get up off the ground. Well, there's Butch Young. I think had he not slipped, he would have been in position to deflect that football, and eventually Erico comes up and uh, drives him out of bounds. Big day for Holland so far. Four catches, 61 yards. First down at the nine, straight give up the middle. Wolfley breaks a couple of tackles and gets down to the one yard line. That was sheer power. Wolfley, 6'1", 210, a junior from Orchard Park, and he just barrels over that Rutgers interior five. Wolfley is the only running back for West Virginia to go over 100 yards this year. Another one, somebody missed a the tackle there, but you can see he does have good power as he overwhelmed at least one defender before finally being brought down. Second down and goal at the one. Full house backfield for West Virginia. Hand off Wolfley, and he gets near the goal line, but not in. So it will bring up a third down, and perhaps inches. As I mentioned before, West Virginia has not been overly impressive running with a football, even in that effort when Wolfley got over 100 yards, 114 yards to be precise, against Boston College. 67 of those 114 yards came on a fake punt. Tom Bowman, the junior from Ohio, checks into the backfield along with Ron Wolfley. And number 32, Tom Gray. T formation, two tight ends, third and goal at the one. Hostetler bootleg, touchdown. Great call. And Hostetler is in for six points. I was going to say to you, Sam, do you think they could run something wide when everyone expects you to go up the middle? Well, he's done that quite often this season. He beat Pittsburgh on a six-yard keeper. He also had a ten-yard keeper in that football game. Fakes it up the middle to Wolfley. Breaks to the outside. 
and just outruns Carl Howard, who had broken to the inside and couldn't get out quite fast enough. Well executed. Hostetler set it up with a good fake to the middle and then just got outside of Carl Howard. He had pretty good speed. Outraced Howard to the end zone. Woodside's extra point up, and it is good. West Virginia takes a 14-point lead again. The score with 9.19 left in the first half. West Virginia 21, Rutgers 7. Five miles south of Pittsburgh, we're in the Appalachian Mountains in Morgantown, West Virginia. The Mountaineers lead Rutgers by a score of 21 to 7. And Woodside's kick handled by James Shedneck. He's out to the 30. And the kicker finally holds him up long enough to get some help. And Rutgers will take over at the 38. Good return by Shedneck. Well, he's been uh, good on those returns uh, all season. For Rutgers, he got the little skirmish down on the field. An altercation. Shedneck has returned 20 kickoffs this year for 430 yards, a 21.5 average. I believe he helped his average a little bit on this one. Waits for the block by Beleza, breaks behind it, up the sideline, try to put on a move there, almost did. Is that the kicker that brought him down? It is, Paul Woodside. He's, He's only 5'11", 170, and he's so valuable as a kicker. He got a great hand from the crowd as he came off the field, forcing that stop on shed net. In any event, Rutgers has good field position at the 38-yard line. First and 10, long set back, Len Beleza. McCrary, quick drop back, throws complete to Baker, makes a fake to the inside, and gets up to the 44. Pick up of five yards or so. Coach Nealon was telling us yesterday that Baker is a dangerous receiver. Well, you can see it snowed here yesterday. It really didn't stick. It, I guess there's a... Uh, a dusting, that's what they call a dusting as you look out over the mountains and hills here. But uh, that accumulation under the bench obviously was swept from the field or from the tar. Second down and four, Rutgers at the 44. Scarlet Knights trying to come back and answer with their own offensive rally. Baker comes wide left, LaPrairie hands to Beleza, big hole, first down, West Virginia Territory, 46 yard line. Then Beleza continues to excel when he's in the football game. He is a sophomore from North Brunswick, New Jersey. Good running back. He's also caught six passes for 41 yards for Rutgers, and they have run the football much more effectively in this football game than West Virginia. Rutgers with 97 total yards in the ball game, 49 on the ground. West Virginia with only 38 on the ground. There's a story to that. The Prairie's throw incomplete, intended for Pendergrass with Steve Newberry back in coverage. The story to the uh, effectiveness of the West Virginia running game is that uh, Jeff Hostetler, the quarterback, has 22 yards on three carries, the rest of the team 16 yards on 16 carries. Sam, this is a dangerous pass, up there. isn't it? Well, yeah, I would say in that instance, with coverage as good as that, it is somewhat dangerous. If the timing is there, those sideline patterns are really not all that dangerous. He threw it a little too far, a little too late, so it was dangerous. Second down and 10. The Prairie rolls left. Still looking, has plenty of time. Looking Boy, for the receiver, it? throws it back against the green. And it's caught by Beleza. And Beleza gets to the 38-yard line before Steve Hathaway wrestled him down. Give a quarterback enough time and he's going to find an open man. Pass protection was the key to that one. Flag down on the play. That last West Virginia scoring drive, by the way. 74 yards and five minutes and change. And Hostetler, who has accounted for all three West Virginia touchdowns today. Two in the air, one on the ground. He went in from one yard away. Penalty will be against... Rutgers, and that will bring back that nice game. Yeah, Hostetler had a great many injuries last year. They played uh, 12 games overall. He was involved in only nine of those games. In fact, he had just returned from an injury when West Virginia played Rutgers last year, and Rutgers did not see very much of Jeff uh, Hostetler. Well, they said during the week he's been suffering from migraine headaches this week after a tough game at Temple. But so far today, he has showed no ill effects, that's for sure. The penalty brings the ball back to the Rutgers 46, and it's third and 18 for the Scarlet Knights. A motion Baker. 
Palmer Prairie is back to throw. Sets up in the pocket. Throwing long for Pendergrass. And it is incomplete. Back in coverage was junior Mike Scott from Parkersburg, West Virginia. And it is fourth down and Rutgers. So it looked like they had a nice drive going. We'll now have to punt it away. Yeah, I, I still don't like that alley-oop type pass. That time he threw it to Andrews instead of Baker. But uh, the defensive secondary for West Virginia laying off the ball. Very little chance of completing that. Gary Luska back in punt formation at his own 30. And he'll be punting to Willie Drury. Luska, the rush is on. And he just gets it away. Drury, fair catch, West Virginia 21, and that's where the Mountaineers will take over first and 10. Seven minutes, 21 seconds left. In the first half, the Mountaineers lead it by a score of 21 to 7. Now, playing on ColecoVision, Mr. Do and Time Pilot, two of the best new arcade games for the best system made. This is Time Pilot, a battle with aircraft from the past and the future. Homing missile! Got him! Uh-oh! Ooh, bomber! And this is Mr. Do. Mow a path to his fruit and start picking, but don't get picked off. Powerball! Nice shot! Mr. Do and Time Pilot, now playing on ColecoVision. The best system in town keeps getting better. Ball from their own 21-yard line. Bruce Beck, Sam DeLuca back at Mountaineer Field in Morgantown, West Virginia. On first down, Jeff Hostetler gives to number 22, Tom Bowman. And he is racked up behind the line of scrimmage. Good pressure by Bob Dumont and Joe Corbett. Once again, Rutgers effective in taking away that running game. They should be as effective in stopping the pass, and they, the score would not be 21-7 to at this point. They have carried um, 17 times now for about 15 net yards, West Virginia has. Second down and 12, Mountaineers at the 20-yard line. Out of the eye, Hostetler play action. Sets up, dumps it across the middle, it's incomplete. It was in the hands of Tom Gray, and he dropped the football. Mentioned that Hostetler is not throwing as often this year. Coming into today's game, in the games that West Virginia has won, he has averaged about 23 passing attempts. In the two games they lost, he threw 29 times in both games. And ideally, that's what you want to do. You don't want to have your quarterback throw 30, 35, or 40 times a football game. On most of those occasions, it's in losing efforts. So it's third and 12, West Virginia at their own 20-yard line. They lead 21-7, 6.42 left in the half. Hostetler setting up. He has Hollins deep. He throws for Hollins, and it's picked off. Picked off by Erico. He's back to the West Virginia 40. Reverses field. And Erico slides down at the West Virginia 27-yard line. Rutgers has their first big play of the ball game, and they have excellent field position at the Mountaineer 27. Well, this is why you don't want your quarterback to throw 35 times a game and why you don't want him to throw deep downfield. It's worked for West Virginia in this game, but it's not going to work for you on other occasions. Erico, I don't believe, was the... Yes, he was the primary coverage man. The ball hung up there, gave Erico time to break in front and, and come up with the interception. Fine heads-up play. You'll see Hollins has to slow up now. He breaks stride. Quarterback does not have enough on the football. Plants it, tries to come back towards the ball. Erico had a better shot at it, got his body in front of Hollins, and comes up with the interception, and Bill Houston finishes off Mr. Hollins as Erico returns the football, and Rutgers has a chance to get back into this football game. Big break for Rutgers. They have the field position now at the 27-yard line, and they have first and 10. The Prairie leads out the Scarlet Knights. Vernon Williams is the lone setback. Baker comes wide left. The Prairie hands off to Williams, and Williams breaks a couple of tackles, and he's down close to the 20 or the 19-yard line. The key, to, the key to this running attack is Joe DiGilio and his ability to handle that nose guard, Dave Obat, their co-captain, uh, one of their better defensive linemen. Well, that play will come back. Holding was the initial signal by our referee, Thomas Stammer, and it will come back. There's the call holding Rutgers back to the 37-yard line goes the ball. Yes, and that upset like that call. Well, 
It upsets him because last week he had seven turnovers against Cincinnati, and that's what Don Nealon, the man you're looking at now, pointed out to us last week. He thought that there were at least two and perhaps three games that Rutgers could have won this season or perhaps should have won. First and 20 for Rutgers at the 37. LaFrey back to throw. Blitz is on, throws the ball, and it's almost intercepted. It popped out of the hands of Dwayne Hooper, and the ball was almost picked off by Van Richardson. And if he would have had that football, Sam, he would have been long gone. Yes, he would have. You'll see the receiver there, but you also see number 73 for Rutgers. He's out there, an offensive lineman. Now watch, he has to duck to avoid the football. <laughs> he almost caught it, and of course, Hooper did not have good vision on the ball because of the presence of the offensive lineman. Number 73 is uh, Tony Regoli. Regoli. We haven't seen much of him this year. No, he's just a freshman. Well, that's why he was there in poor position. He should have been in front of Dwayne Hooper. In any event, a big break for Rutgers. Roughing the passer was called against West Virginia. Scarlet Knights get an automatic 15 yards and a first down at the 22-yard line. Well, of those Western penalties Virginia. evened out, didn't they? Yes, they did. Plus the fact they get the first down out of it. The Rutgers with a single setback. That's Beleza. Three receivers to the right side. In motion goes Baker. And off to Dwayne Hooper. And Hooper gets two yards at the most on that play. West Virginia not fooled with the tailback coming out of the slot that time as Daniels and Christian made the stop. Well, Dwayne Hooper had been alternating early on or early in the season with Albert Smith. He broke his hand in the Army game and returned for the first time last week against Cincinnati. Second down and nine at the 21. Rutgers trailing 21-7, 5.26 left first half. Rutgers with an excellent opportunity to get back in it again. Baker comes wide to the left. Cooper is the eye back. The ferry to throw. Has time. Now the time ends and he is sacked. Ernie Anderson, Jr. from Colliers, West Virginia. Out of nowhere, with some help from Steve Hathaway, got to Jack LaPrairie. Well, Hathaway is that defensive end or outside linebacker that leads the team with 12 sacks. Anderson is the backup nose tackle who has been alternating with Dave Oblak, but they converged on LaPrairie, didn't they? He had an opportunity to throw that ball away, but of course, it, it's easy to say up here, isn't it? I guess that's a, uh, a keep warm or protect your nose. And <laughs> Anything to keep it warm. This is third and 20 for Rutgers. Ball at the West Virginia 32. LaFrary sets up, looks, fires, and it's incomplete. Intended for Andrew Baker. No interception. Called an incomplete pass. It will bring up fourth and 20 for the Scarlet Knights. They were going for the big play man, Andrew Baker. Now this is why receivers constantly talk about the difficulty of catching the football over the middle. Watch the action and the hitting down here as people are converging on each other at full speed. Pretty good pass protection that time. Number 44 has a beat on the football. Somebody deflects it. Really a uh, little chance of a completion. Watch, somebody is in front of Baker now. Number Daniel. Yeah, and he just, Baker really never had a shot at the football after it was deflected. He didn't even know where it was coming. It hit him in the head, actually. He was protecting himself. And Agee hit him pretty good, didn't he? Agee's a hitter, isn't he? Gary Lusk on fourth down, punting for the Coffin corner, and I think he got it. And they'll spot the football at the two-yard line or so. So Rutgers puts West Virginia in a hole, and the Mountaineers will start very close to their own goal line, depending exactly where Thomas Thamert spots the football. Well, with 4.10 to go in this first half of play, the Mountaineers of West Virginia lead the Scarlet Knights 21-7. You're watching Rutgers football on Madison Square Garden Cablevision. Illegally touching the football, and West Virginia, instead of starting from the 1, starts from the 20. First down, full back, Ron Wolfley gets the call, and Wolfley with a big gain up to the 25-yard line. So Rutgers almost had the Mountaineers in deep trouble, but instead they start with 20 yards behind them. 
Oh, just a coffee break for a couple of the regular players. Get over, get warm, Sam, and we'll get back in that football game. Number four, he's, he's got to be a kicker, too. <laughs> well, the, the coach's son, one of the two, was a little guy, wasn't he? Second down and five from the 25, straight up the middle again. Brokely getting three yards. It'll bring up third down and short for the Mountaineers. Wolfley is a junior from Orchard Park, New York. And as Sam mentioned, the only player to go over 100 yards this season in a game. His, his big play this season was a 67-yard fake punt touchdown against Boston College. Rutgers continues to move people in and out of their defensive unit, especially up front on that defensive line and moving people around from one side to another. Third down to 28-yard line. Hot Stetler hands off, fumble. West Virginia and Rutgers both scrambling. And the Scarlet Knights look like they have the football. Tyrone Stone, number 41, was jumping up and down with the ball, and Rutgers will get another big break. Well, Rutgers has just shut off the West Virginia running attack. There you see the offensive guard pulling. Number 99 gets in the middle of things, Lionel Washington, but he didn't make the initial hit. I didn't. Was that uh, Butch Young who came up to make that tackle? Jim Dumont, I think, wrestled the ball for him, Sam. He made that big pop. And then Rutgers gets the ball. Again, that's the second time today Dumont's forced the fumble. So Rutgers with 252 and a half gets another shot at it. Trailing by 14 at the West Virginia 31, first and 10. Hand off to Lynn Beleza, and he goes nowhere. Tried the right side, but ran into Jim Merritts, Dave O'Block, Rich Walters, and a host of other Mountaineers. And uh, Tim Agee is always around that football. He's that safety that leads the team in interceptions and tackles. Coach Nealon says he's too little, too cute, too slow. But when you put the bonnet on him, he turns into just a dynamite football player. Second down, 9, 30-yard line. Single setback again. Two tight ends and two wide receivers for Rutgers. The Prairie throws, and it's almost intercepted. He threw the ball right into the arms of Eddie Hughes. It is an incomplete pass. It will bring up third and nine. Well, that's what uh, Don Nealon was talking about when he said that Hostetler has good vision. He meant that he sees everything on the football field and that a quarterback is supposed to see where those linebackers or out defensive end, in this case, whatever you want to call them, is. Obviously, the Prairie did not see Hughes moving into the area because he threw it right at you. La Prairie, 7 of 13, third and nine, and he's back to throw again. La Prairie throws across the middle. It's incomplete. Half intended for Beleza. And Rutgers all of a sudden has a lot of problems moving the football in the air. No mistakes. He should have held on to that football. The ball was thrown well. He did not have to adjust to it. Did not have to turn around. It hit him right in the hands. And Beleza should have held on to it. Well, this time Tom Angstadt will try a field goal. And this will be a 47-yard attempt. Angstadt is 10 of 13 on the season. He has 42 points to lead Rutgers in that category. And on a couple of occasions, he's hit field goal from 50. So this is within his range. 47-yard attempt by Tom Angstack. Ball placed down, and he's going to be short. So Angstack comes up a little bit short, and Rutgers comes up empty. West Virginia will take over with 2.04 left in the first half and leading by 14. And of course, they got pretty good field position now and can easily get downfield and attempt a field goal of their own. Of course, if Hostetler continues to find the open man as he has been, he is now 8 for 12 for 167 yards, two touchdowns and one interception. They can do just about anything. They don't have to settle for the field goal. 30-yard line is where the Mountaineers will take over. First and 10, West Virginia 7 and 2, looking for their third consecutive bowl bid. Hostetler throwing long for Wayne Brown. It's incomplete. That pass was 60 yards in the air, and not a wrinkle. Coverage on the play by Carl Howard and Bill Houston. Good coverage on the play. Scouts are here this afternoon from the Hall of Fame Bowl, the Peach Bowl, the Citrus Bowl, the Gator Bowl, and the Liberty Bowl, all looking at West Virginia. The first announcement for bowl invitations will be next Saturday, November 19th. Certainly this week's game and next week's game figure very heavily into those final bowl selections. 
Straight up the middle, Tommy Gray. He runs into Lionel Washington. And Rutgers conceivably could get the football back before halftime and have pretty good field position if they can hold West Virginia on this next play. Defensive line for Rutgers doing a good job. Not trying to take on those offensive people and control them. They're taking a side taking one side of the offensive man and trying to get penetration, and they are succeeding. Third and ten, Gary Mullen comes wide to the left, wide to the other side, goes Hollins back to throw, Hostetler rolling out of the pocket, has a lot of room, decides to pull up and throw, and he has a first down. He has Willie Drury at the Rutgers 44-yard line, but a flag is down on the play. He may have crossed the line of scrimmage. You saw him that time looking at Jim Dumont. And when Jim Dumont leaves coverage and comes up to converge on Hostetler, that's when he throws directly over Dumont into the area that he vacated. Now watch eventually you'll see, I think, 53 coming up into your picture. <laughs> no, he, well, you got a, a glimpse of him, but that's the area that Dumont would have been in, in front of that receiver cutting over the middle. But anyway, Hostetler threw the ball from beyond the line yes. of scrimmage, Sam, and that is a loss of down, and it will be fourth down, and West Virginia will have to punt it away. So Jim Dumont played it perfectly. Did not leave coverage until after Hostetler crossed the line of scrimmage or when he was certain that he was going to cross the line of scrimmage. Here's the call. It is a loss of down, and West Virginia will have to punt it away as Steve Superick checks into the ball game. Superick, second punt of the day. He waits for it at the 13-yard line. James Shednack deep for Scarlet Knights, and he waits at the 38-yard line of Rutgers. Still a minute seven left in the first half. Time enough for Rutgers to move the football and get the field goal position. Good punt by Superick. Shednack at the 35, or is that Danny Erico? And he breaks the tackle. And Erico is at the 50, and he spins to the 45. And Rutgers gets a 20-yard return from Danny Erico. And that is a fine, twisting play. Good return by Erico. Presence of mind, eluded some tacklers, and at the end of the run, when there was nothing to do but put down your head, he, he picked up an extra yard. Look at that. Ducks under one man. Waits for a block. Bukowski never gets one. Outruns three there. Does pick up one block. Spins off another. And now just struggles for that extra yard. 49 seconds left. First half. Rutgers first and 10. West Virginia 46-yard line. LaFerry to throw. He is hit by Q. And he goes down. Steve Hathaway, who had 12 sacks coming into today's football game, will get credit with number 13. Built a lot by uh, like Lionel Washington, both 64 inches. Uh, he's a little heavier than Washington Hathaway is. He's about 220 pounds, a senior, 12 sacks on the year. Watch him come in from the left. There he is, overpowering Beleza, I believe, or not, it's Vernon Williams. And eventually they converge on uh, La Prairie. So the ball comes all the way back to the Rutgers 46-yard line, and it will be second down and long. That's a Ferry, who started off very, very hot, is now 50%. Mm -hmm. That's a knack, being able to uh, rush the passer from that linebacking position. Some people just are never able to do it, and other people who have the quickness, uh, the speed, the agility, just, just love to come on the quarterback. I think in the case of uh, Hathaway, his height is certainly an advantage, just as it is for Lionel Washington. Gives you leverage on those shorter offensive backs trying to block you. Second down and long, 40 seconds left in the first half. Rutgers trails 21-7. LaFerry back to throw, blitzes on again. LaFerry gets it away this time to Albert Smith. And Smith gets near the midfield stripe. Steps out of bounds, will stop the block with 32 seconds left. Thought for a moment that LaFerry just reacted well to the blitzing defensive end or linebacker coming from that side. But after he had released the ball to Albert Smith, it was obvious that that was planned because there were two linemen out in front of Smith prepared to block on the play. Third and 16 with 32 ticks left, first half of play. Baker comes in motion, LaPrairie back to throw. Pressure again. McCrary gets away from one, gets away from two, and then finally is sacked by Hathaway back at the 28-yard line. 
Also pressure from Jeff Lucas from Hackensack, New Jersey. This is the moment of truth for the offensive linemen. You know those people are going to be rushing the passer. They have a decided advantage in this instance, and you've just got to hang in there and block people. They're not doing a good job of it. There's Hathaway. He makes the big play, and the first half has come to an end. The fumble occurred after the whistle had flown, and West Virginia takes a 14-point lead into the locker room at halftime. Score, West Virginia 21. 58 on the back of the helmets being worn today by West Virginia football players is for teammate Andre Gist who was killed Sunday in a car crash near campus. Gist was a member of last year's West Virginia football team and certainly the players will wear decals of Gist's former uniform number 58 on their helmets today as a tribute to their former teammate. Yeah, unfortunate, untimely of course and tragic. Gist uh, had played with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last year. Ready to go for the second half of play. Rutgers will receive the football. The crowd is fired up. A crowd of somewhere over 40,000 showed up today in Morgantown, although the advance sale was well over 50,000. Perhaps the cold weather conditions kept a couple of people away. Don Nealon, of course, he was upset. They uh, beat Temple last week, and they beat Temple rather decidedly, 27 to 9. After the game, the coach for Temple Bruce Arian said that B.C., Boston College, should receive the Lambert Trophy. Evidently, he felt that uh, B.C. was a better team than West Virginia, and this upset and irked uh, Don Nealon. He felt that he had no business saying that. Well, we'll see what happens. Second half underway. Dan Errico takes it a yard deep, and we'll bring it out. He's across the 20, across the 30, fumbles the ball. And if it goes out of bounds, Rutgers will keep possession. And it looks like the Scarlet Knights will have the football first and ten. Yep. Rutgers did not have a turnover, did not suffer from a turnover in the first half. West Virginia turned it over twice, once on an interception, once on a fumble. Of course, last week against Cincinnati, Rutgers turned the football over seven times, which were, was instrumental in that 18-7 loss to Cincinnati in Cincinnati. So Rutgers will have it first and ten from the 34-yard line. And let's see what happens as we begin, we begin the third quarter of play. Jack LaFerry is the quarterback for Rutgers. On first down, he hands to Albert Smith. Big hole, eight yards, and then some. Tackle made by Steve Hathaway, the senior from Beaver, Pennsylvania. Mm, I don't think Hathaway was in on that tackle because I thought Clement Udovich did a fine job of blocking on him, pulling out. But... Uh, Anyway, Yudovich had a good block on somebody. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Second down and two, 42-yard line. Rutgers has moved the football, but a couple of times with opportunities, they couldn't push it into the end zone. In motion comes Baker. Alan Andrews has been quiet so far today. The Prairie in trouble, still looking, throws incomplete. He was in the arms of Rich Walters, the senior from Glenshaw, Pennsylvania. And Walters, who had a great game last year against Oklahoma, really put pressure on the prayer. Rich Walters, a three-year starter, defensive tackle. Watch him now. He just wraps him up. That's number 97, wrapped up around number 16. Eventually, uh, wisely, the prairie throws it away. And I guess number 33 was in the area, so the official didn't call it. Third down, Rutgers, nine yards to go, ball at the 35. Baker comes left, Pendergrass, wide right. LaFerry to throw. Step Steps up. in, throws complete to Beleza, short of a first down at the 39-yard line. Eddie Hughes, the man to make the stop, and West Virginia has held. Of course, LaFerry was trying to avoid that pass to Beleza. He knew that it was not adequate or not sufficient for a first down, could not find anyone deep downfield, was under pressure. Eventually, he had to unload to Beleza. Gary Lisk is the punt for the fifth time this afternoon. Willie Drury is the deep man for the Mountaineers. Short kick. Drury, 35, gets to the 38. So the Mountaineers will put it in play first and 10 to the 38. West Virginia, Sam, came really fired up out of the locker room at the end of the first half of play. 12-52, third quarter. Mountaineers own the lead by 14. Your money worth more.
Virginia, first and 10 for their own 38-yard line. They lead by 14 points. Lone setback is the fullback, Wolfley. He gets the call, runs it to Jim Dumont and Tyrone Stowe. A pickup of only two. It will be second down and eight. There's Jimmy Dumont, senior, playing with pride each and every week. He was our player of the week three times back in 1982, and I guess several times this year, leading the team with 118 tackles. Last year, he had 133 tackles for Rutgers, so he has an opportunity to break that record. Injured player is Bill Legg, the offensive center for West Virginia, and he is being replaced by Rob Shellhack. Bill Legg was a starter for West Virginia in 1982. In fact, uh, he can play both guard and center. He was uh, switched to guard in 81, moved back to center in 82, and of course has played offensive center throughout the season this year. Second down at eight, 41 yard line. Hostetler to throw, steps into the pocket, pressure. Hostetler looks, fires incomplete. Intended for Rob Bennett, but the big pressure came from Bill Beschner. Yes, good rush. Just three people rushing, and they put pressure on the quarterback. There's a little mountain man, and perhaps the real mountaineer right beside him. Boy, he looks the role, doesn't he? Watch the good rush. Bill Beschner, number 65. Well, eventually he overpowers that... Uh, Offensive center, and number 90 gives him some help. That's Harry Swain. Hostetler throws off balance and overthrows his receiver. Third and eight, 41. Hostetler rolls, fires, caught by Hollins. And he has first down yardage at the 50. Tyrone still made the stop, but every good wide receiver knows where that first down marker is, and that's exactly what Hollins do. Well, last week, Hostetler hit 14 for 23 for 175 yards. In this game, he is now 9 for 15 for 176 yards. 50-yard line, first and 10 Mountaineers. Crowd coming alive. A matter of fact, fans were here as early as 10 a.m. for a 1.30 start today. They take their football seriously. Handoff to Pat Randolph. He gets three yards to the left side. Harry Swain came up to make the tackle. Play awfully slow in developing. Harry Swain was actually on the ground got up off the turf and was still able to get in on the tackle. Remember Harry Swain playing that right tackle on occasion. They've been moving people in and out, going it up against uh, <laughs> Brian Joswiak, and he's, he's giving Joswiak, I guess, about 40 pounds, spotting 40 pounds and about three inches. You really handled that, that one well. Hit, that name gets me. Second down and seven, Rutgers 47-yard line for the Mountaineers, and the handoff goes to Pat Randolph. And he is stopped again by Bukowski and Stowe. Rutgers continues to snuff out the running game of West Virginia. And you've got to give credit to the uh, defensive coaches for Rutgers, all of them, because the, the defensive line and the linebackers are doing an outstanding job, aggressive, not trying to overpower people, taking a corner of the offensive player and going through, getting penetration, each man assigned to a gap and each man doing his assignment well. Third and seven, 47. West Virginia has been very successful so far today on third down. Hostetler drops in trouble, and he has dropped. Big pressure from Barry Bukowski, and Hostetler dropped for a loss back at his own 44. Another example of using your personnel properly and getting the most out of everyone. Shifting people in and out, situation substitutions along the front seven. Three down linemen and four linebackers. That time you see the defensive end or linebacker Bukowski coming in and pulling Halstead down. Back in punt formation, Steve Superick, James Shedneck, and Dan Errico deep. Errico will go after the football, and it takes a West Virginia bounce. It's at the five, and it will be down inside the five-yard line. Flag downfield, however. Maybe they'll have an opportunity to do that one over. Flag is down on the play. Great hustle by number 30, Fred Smalls of West Virginia. The ball will be at the two, but there are flags down on the play, and the preliminary hall ball is holding against Rutgers. Defensive holding. And now watch the... Well, he really didn't have to do that. Well, yes, he did, because had he held on to the football, he would have gone into the end zone, and then, of course, it would have been uh, ruled a touchback, so he had to... 
to bounce it back onto the field of play. He did not bat the football the way a Rutgers player did in the first half when Rutgers looked to have held West Virginia in deep, deep trouble. But now the Mountaineers come up with the play. They refuse the penalty against Rutgers, I would think. Against the Rutgers. No, they will mark that half the distance from the spot. Sam, this is one of those times where you only lose a yard. Yeah, well, that yard <laughs> it doesn't help. No, it doesn't help. <laughs> But this puts great pressure on your offense, and especially with your quarterback. Rutgers will start from a one-yard line. The Mountaineer fans are going wild. 9.56, third quarter, West Virginia 21, Rutgers 7. The Prairie with a long count. Hands the ball straight up the middle, and a big haul for Vernon Williams. And that was just a sheer good effort on the part of Williams as he gets out to the nine. Well, how about the offensive center and guard? Joe DiGilio does an outstanding job. And watch number 72, John Owens, pulling out behind the offense. Boy, did he move. Oh, he moved. Did he move? <laughs> but notice DiGilio still with the nose guard. Ernie Anderson, number 95, well after the ball carry was downfield. Second down and call it two for the Scarlet Knights at the nine. Low setback is Vernon Williams. And the give is to Williams, and he twists and turns and gets a first down. Well, if it works one time, do it again. They ran the same play uh, with uh, the offensive gone jo guard, John Owens, pulling once again. Of course, again, the key block or the pressure on the offensive center, Joe DiGilio. So Rutgers with a little bit of breathing room. They trail by 14 points. Their lone touchdown scored on a short run by Albert Smith. Scarlet Knights first and 10 from their own 13. Two wide receivers to the right. Rutgers using a lot of the wing in this football game. The Prairie, hands off to the wing back. Cooper, jump for a big loss. That was definitely Steve Hathaway. Yeah, Steve Hathaway just saw the wing back, Dwayne Hooper, going in motion, and he just follows him and wraps him up just as he gets the handoff from the prairie. Now watch, there you see him all over, Hathaway just all over Hooper. Hooper never had a chance to break free. Hathaway, who this year replaced All-American Darrell Talley and has filled the void extremely well. Talley uh, will be playing tomorrow against the Jets at Chase Stadium. He's with the Buffalo Bills. He can hit. Second and 16, eight yard line for Rutgers. Now they go back to the conventional eye in the handoff is to Hooper, and he goes nowhere. Tremendous pressure that time by Jimmy Merrick. And this West Virginia football team, with eyes on a third consecutive trip to a bowl, is really fired up. Jim Merritt's number 96, leads the team in tackles. You see him breaking to the inside. Panucci tries to stay with him. That's about all he could do had Hooper had a... Well, it would have been very difficult. His only chance was to break behind the block as Panucci was still with Merritts. Rutgers punts on third down, and Gary Liska drills it out to the 42-yard line. Steve Newberry made the fair catch, and West Virginia is in Rutgers territory, leading by 14 with 7.37 left in the third quarter of play. Out the Mountaineers, first and 10, Rutgers 42. Hostetler will put it up on first down. Rolls, looks, fires, complete to Hollins. First down and more at the Rutgers 26. Nice completion by Hostetler. You saw him rolling to the left. Always a tough assignment for a right-handed quarterback. Has to stop, plant his left foot, and then throw the football. Good pass protection. Hard to get a rush on the quarterback when he's rolling like that, but he has a great many blockers there. Good block, I believe, on Lionel Washington. You see him try to plant that foot stop and then throw the football still somewhat off balance but he got it to his receiver gary mullen wide right first and ten rutgers 26 and somebody jumped in the middle of that rutgers line it was billy bestner they do just about everything this west virginia offensive unit uh, drop back passes roll out passes about the only thing they don't do is run the option play and don newen says it's it's hard to be a good passing team and teach the option well. And that's the reason he's not crazy about uh, the option play. He says your quarterback gets banged up and it takes practice time away from the pass. He wants his quarterback 
to practice the passing game all the time. Rest of the team divides their time between the pass and the run, but the quarterback stays with a passing game, and he feels that putting in the option play just takes time away from that and isn't worth the effort. Five-yard penalty assessed to Rutgers. First and five, West Virginia, Rutgers 21. Wolfley dumped at the line of scrimmage by Tyrone Stuff. He yep. talked about him in the open, and he continues to hustle. He's going to be a, an outstanding football player. A little bit undersized this year at 6'2", only 205 pounds, but he's a freshman, and you know that by the time he's finished, he's going to weigh 220, 225 with weight training. Beshner gets buried that time, so all the pressure was on Stowe. The running back had a lot of room to maneuver. Just a good tackle, but Jim Dumont was also there to back up still. Hostetler rolls on second and five. Fires complete to Bennett. Touchdown, West Virginia. The big play. The big play has hurt Rutgers today. Third touchdown pass of the afternoon for Hostetler. And Bennett, the junior from Buckhannon, West Virginia, is into the end zone. Well, for a tight end, his average coming into today's game was very impressive. 16.2 yards per reception. Good for a tight end. Pass right on target. Just waiting for the football. And once again, between a number of defenders, but nobody close enough to be a factor on the play. Good size target. 6'6", 240. How can a guy that big get lost over the middle like that? Ball Woodside on for the point after touchdown, and he drills it. Woodside has now hit 53 consecutive extra points in his career at West Virginia. The Mountaineers have opened up a 21-point lead. Well, Frank Burns has to be concerned now. His club has fallen behind by three touchdowns and another brilliant touchdown throw by Jeff Hostetler. And Paul Woodside kicks off for West Virginia. Dan Erico fumbles the ball in the end zone and will have to down the ball and Rutgers will start from the 20. Well, a good team can make an average quarterback look good and when you have a good quarterback and a pretty good offensive team, of course, the quarterback can look outstanding and Hostetler has been outstanding today. 11 for 17 for 213 yards and three touchdowns. Mountaineers strike quickly, don't they? Three plays in the last drive and they don't use up much of the clock. First down, Rutgers, 20-yard line, trailing by 21, 6.26, third quarter of play. LaFrary back to throw on first down, has time, fires, and it's complete for a first down. Andrew Baker up at the 31-yard line, and Baker, who has some amazing statistics on the season, averaging over 27 yards per reception, Paul's in another one. Boy, he's had some long ones, haven't he? That time uh, he just hooked up, and that's what you want to do when they're in zone coverage like that. Just hook up, and of course the quarterback has to read it, and he has to deliver the football as you're about to, to make your break and turn and face him. Baker, three catches, 23 yards. First and 10, Rutgers, 31-yard line. Give to Vernon Williams, and Williams continues to power his way for six or seven following Owens and DeGilio and Rigoli. Well, Rutgers has about 80 yards rushing, but I have a feeling that they have more than that. It's the uh, the sacks and the losses which make that less impressive. But uh, LaPrairie has been thrown four times for 42 yards. So you add that to the rushing yardage, and they've run well today. Second down and four at the 37. Right up the middle, Williams, short of a first down. It will be third down and a yard and a half. Dave Preston and Steve Hathaway both in on the stop. And, of course, quarterback sacks are counted as lost yardage against the running game. Maybe one of the reasons that West Virginia had just an average rush of 3.2 yards per carry coming into today's game because Hostetler had carried 71 times for 0.2 yards per carry. So, of course, that that influences the rushing average. Third and call it one. Straight give up the middle. Williams stood up. I don't know. Dave Preston and a host of other black shirts were there. There's Preston, junior from Warren, Ohio. And he plays with enthusiasm. Boy, when you need the crucial yardage, you go to the play that has been successful in the past. 
and they had good yardage in the past, pulling John Owens, the right guard, and running right up the middle, but not that time. West Virginia has held. Fourth down and two feet. Rutgers will punt it away. Liska back at his 25. Drury drops back deep for West Virginia at his 25. Drury, fair catch at the 30-yard line, and West Virginia will start there first and 10. This program is authorized by Madison Square Garden Productions Incorporated solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this event, including the imposition of a charge for viewing the program without the express written consent of Madison Square Garden Productions Incorporated, is prohibited. And the announcers on this telecast were selected by Madison Square Garden Productions Incorporated. And I think that Madison Square Garden's Productions Incorporated is going to insist upon the window being open regardless of the temperature outside in the future because it does make a difference, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And Hostetler goes back to throw on first down. Fires complete to Hollins. Has a first down at the 42-yard line. Hollins has been exceptional today. That is his seventh reception. And he now has 96 catches on his career. Well, that's a tough combination, isn't it? Tough combination. Hostetler, you know, the, I think the thing that marks all good quarterbacks is their poise under pressure. He doesn't have any pressure on him, does he? Look at this. He's relaxed. <laughs> I think that's Cole doesn't fun. bother him. Here's Holland's stats in the afternoon. Definite pro prospect. This is Pat Randolph, and he is stopped for a loss. Good hustle by Joe Corbin, who gets into the ball game as a backup strong safety, also plays on special teams, and he is just a hard worker. He started the season as a nickelback, and he started a few games for Harold Young, and they've been alternating, but he is one of the five defensive backs who you have to consider him a starter for Rutgers in the defensive secondary. Second and 13, West Virginia. They lead by 21 with 3.06 left third quarter. Hops that were rolled. Looks, throws, complete. Short of a first down. Caught by Willie Drury, young man from Northern Burlington High School in Columbus, New Jersey. Sam, I had him in a high school all-star game a couple of years ago. He scored something like 40 touchdowns his senior year. Just remarkable. Here at West Virginia, they moved him from a running back to a receiver. I guess it takes some time, but yesterday, Don Nealon uh, expressed some disappointment in the progress of Drury. Well, he still has the capacity to make a big play. In the Gator Bowl last year, he had an 82-yard punt return. Still has another year at West Virginia. Draw play and upended as Wolfley by Tyrone Stowe. And again, Stowe read the play, was not fooled by the fake, and made the tackle. Either an excellent reaction on the part of Stowe, or perhaps he was blitzing on the play. I tend to believe it was just good reaction. You see a gaping hole, which means that he has to make a sure tackle, and he sure does on Ron Wolfley. Hunting time, West Virginia, fourth and six at the 45. Steve Superick, he's had a good afternoon. His long 54 yards. Dan Errico deep for Rutgers. Scarlet Knights almost got a piece of that punt. What a shot by Superick into the end zone. He'll get credit with a 55-yard punt, and Rutgers will have to start from their own 20-yard line. Boy, that kicking game makes such a difference, Boy, doesn't, doesn't it? it? especially when you control the football. I guess what most coaches would like to do is have a ball control type offense, not necessarily running all the time. Obviously, you've got to pass the ball and you've got to be balanced, but then you supplement that with good defense and a good kicking game, and you're there. You saw the story. Rutgers starts out from their own 20. La Prairie to throw. Hathaway after him. Pass is complete to Andrews, and Andrews is up to the 27-yard line. And of course, with time running down here in the third quarter, about a minute and a half to play, I think that Rutgers may have to change their game plan a little bit. They've been successful on the ground, but trailing by three touchdowns, they may have to put the ball in the air a little more. Andrews on the afternoon, one catch, six yards. He now has 41 this season, eight shy of the Rutgers season record set by Tim O'Dell in 1980 of 49 catches. LaPrairie back to throw. Fires complete. First down. Baker gets away from one man and gets to the 43-yard line. Each week, Sam and I talk to the coaches from other teams, and each week 
they always say, we respect that young man, Baker. He's a good player. Well, you've got to respect him. He had a 31-yarder against Tennessee, and he's had six other catches for that much yardage or longer. In fact, he had a 76-yarder against Penn State. He can hurt you with a bomb, as Hostetler has hurt Rutgers today. First and 10 Rutgers, 42-yard line, failing by three touchdowns. The Prairie sets up, fires, and incomplete. Three or four men around Andrew Baker, Derek Christian among them, and it will go as an incompleted pass. Jim Merritt's number 96 led to West Virginian tackles last year on the defensive line. Let's see what he does this time. Comes in, offensive tackle, I believe that's uh, number 74, sets up well, it's Jim Keating, takes an inside move. Now see, he wraps up Keating there, and of course, well, does Keating let go of that arm? No, I wouldn't either, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Keating didn't it, do a bad job. No, he did a good job of staying with him. Second and ten, Rutgers stays on the ground, and Vernon Williams picks up three. But I think that was a good example, Bruce, of how easy it is for an offensive lineman to get called for holding, because you saw that Merritt actually put his arm under Keating, you see? And now it's a question of, does Keating let up? No. At right, that time, he took an inside rush. Keating just tried to stay with him. That was the only thing he could do. Not a bad effort. He won't get a bad grade on that, despite the fact that Merritt was in on the tackle. Perhaps the back should have broken to the outside, outside of Keating on the play. Third down, eight. LaFerry, last play of the third quarter. Fires incomplete. Intended for Baker. And really racked up by Anthony Daniels, the strong safety number eight. Let's look at Merritt and Keating once again. We're purposely isolating on them to give you an idea of what goes on up front. Put out those arms. As long as you retreat blocking, you can do that. You saw Merritt shove off the arms. Get away. You, you can't do that. But a good job overall by Keating. Once again, on a, on a ratio of one to four and a grade of one to four, he gets a three on that play. Third quarter complete. Mountaineer Field, Morgantown, West Virginia. The score, West Virginia 28, Rutgers 7. We'll be back with more football in just a moment. Saloka back at Mountaineer Field, Morgantown, West Virginia. The Mountaineers lead 28-7 over the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. And back on fourth down and eight, Willie Drury looking for the football as Gary Liska will punt it away for the Scarlet Knights. West Virginia 7-2 looking for a pole bid. And Liska just gets the punt away. Drury's exciting. He has it at the 22. Gets away from a couple. He's at the 40. Watch out. And he gets to the 50. He broke one last year in the Meadowlands against Rutgers. This time a 30-yard return. And the Mountaineers again in Rutgers territory. John Cummins made the tackle. Let's see how he eludes these, this first wave. This is the trick now to get by them. Breaks down. Everybody breaks down. Looked to be in pretty good position. They just didn't converge on him quickly enough. Perhaps some of those people, number 43 and number 97, broke down too far away from Drury. They should have been a little closer before they stopped to make sure they got a, a sure tackle on him. Hostetler going for all the marbles incomplete. Hollins was covered very, very well by Dan Herrica, who has played a solid football game for Rutgers. There's Haas, Jeff Hostetler, fifth in all-time passing yardage at West Virginia. F after you pronounce his name, Hostetler, several times, and you're trying to do it hurriedly, now I know why they call him Haas. <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> Isn't it? 16-5 and five is West Virginia under Hostetler. Last week against Temple, 14 of 23. He's fifth in total offense in the all-time list. He does it all. Hostetler rolls, looks, throws, complete. And another first down. Willie Drury was the man that pulled in that pass, and Drury is having some afternoon. Linebacker has dual responsibility. He's got responsibility for the run and the pass. Watch Tyrone Still. He drops back here, and this is the hardest thing for a freshman linebacker to do. Now watch how close he is to number 35. He's got deeper coverage than Bob Dumont, but I have the feeling that he should have been a little bit more to the outside and a little bit closer to Drury as he caught the football. First and 10 handoff to Pat Randolph, and Randolph is inside the Rutgers 30 to the 28. Flag down on the play. It may have been a late hit or a face mask. Okay, obviously, the 
Rutgers team, the defensive unit was in zone coverage on that previous play when we had the isolation on Tyrone Stowe. When you're in zone coverage, you obviously don't want two people as close as Tyrone Stowe and Dumont were on that play. Let's see what happens on this one. The handoff to Gray. Breaks to the outside. Boy, there wasn't much of an opening there, was it? He's eventually wrestled down. And that might, was that considered a late hit? No, it was, it was a personal foul. Yes, it may very late well have hit. been a late That's hit. That's what it was. Yep. Here's a look at the statistics through three quarters of play. West, West Virginia has turned it over twice. Rutgers has not turned it over at all, but West Virginia has done it in the air. And that's the big stat. Hostetler with three touchdown passes. Time of possession, almost identical. First down and 10 to go for the Mountaineers at the Rutgers 14. Hostetler rolls left. Looks, throws, and it's caught at the one-yard line. Great catch by Wayne Brown. Another Somerville, New Jersey product who played for coach Jerry Moore. And West Virginia has first and goal at the two. Well, Wayne Brown just does an outstanding job. Once again, Hostetler throwing on the run. He seems to do that as well or better than uh, here. Now, you saw that receiver, Brown, use his body okay, to, to keep the uh, defender away from him. Not a very big body, 6'1", 180 pounds, but he used it well. And Hostetler right on target. Spotted at the one-yard line. First and goal, Mountaineers. Full house backfield. And Rutgers has stopped West Virginia on first down. Jimmy Dumont made the hit. Ron Wolfley was the ball carrier. who will bring up a second down and short. Sam, the last time West Virginia got close, Hostetler ran a bootleg. I don't know if he'll do it again, but it was executed so well the first time, you might have to think about it. Well, if history is an indication, there's a good chance that he will run it again because he not only did it in this game against Rutgers, he's done it quite a few times this season, and it's been very a, a very successful play for them. Second down, goal at the one. Straight give, Wolfley, touchdown, West Virginia. And the Mountaineers have 34 points with 13 minutes and 15 seconds left in the football game. Well, you don't get the impression that uh, West Virginia is just dominating or overpowering Rutgers, but when you look up at that scoreboard, it certainly appears that way, doesn't it? It's been the big play primarily, and they have not had great success in running with a football, but this time in the short yardage situation, they get the surge, not much of a surge, but enough to get Wolfley over the goal line. You saw number 15, Bill Houston and Corbin and several others coming up, but not quite fast enough. Paul Woodside looking for point number 35. And they say he's absolutely academic. They say he's money in the bank. West Virginia has extended their lead to four touchdowns. They lead 35 to 7 with 13-15 left to play. Soaring here at Mountaineer Field as the fans and perhaps some of the diehard enthusiasts sense another bowl invitation. West Virginia today playing before scouts from the Hall of Fame, Peach, Citrus, Gator, and Liberty Bowl, and looking to improve to 8-2. Well, the last two touchdowns for West Virginia, you've got to uh, really credit the Rutgers offense and their special teams. For both of those touchdowns, they had to travel just 42 yards for the first one and only 48 yards for, for the second. Obviously, they started with good field position. Woodside bounces it to the 10-yard line, and Rutgers' Albert Smith returning the ball to the 27-yard line. That last Mountaineer scoring drive again happened so quickly. Six plays, 48 yards, a minute 34, and Wolfley scoring his fourth touchdown of the season. You know, Rutgers has uh, had some long pass plays this season, the ones to Baker. Uh, they came into today's game with an impressive 11.5 yards per completion via the pass. However, opposing teams have averaged 12.2 yards, and certainly that percentage has been increased today because Hostetler has hurt them with a the bomb repeatedly. Joe Corbin is the injured Rutgers player down the field. West Virginia fans come from all over the state. The enrollment here at the university, 22,000. And the crowd, well, the seating here at Mountaineer Field holds well over 50, somewhere near 60 when they need to really press everybody into the corners. 
35 to 7 West Virginia leads Rutgers and we'll take a timeout with 13.09 to play. Frank Burns and the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers face an unenviable task, trailing 35-7 with 13.09 left in the ball game. Rutgers with it, first and 10 for their own 27-yard line. LaFrary back to throw on first down. Scramble. He's back to the 30, has a first down, he's at the 40, and he's out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Fine individual run by LaFrary, knocked out of bounds by Steve Newberry. Tim Agee is the weak safety. He's frequently free. They sometimes call him the free safety. Looks at the quarterback a great deal as he doesn't have specific responsibility. Takes his deep drop into center field. Sees the receiver coming into that area. He was covering Andrew Baker. Number 81 was going to help on him. Then, of course, the quarterback moves out to his left, and you saw Agee recover and try to get there. First and 10, 44-yard line. LaFrary straight drop back. Blitz is on. The swing pass is incomplete. The pass intended for Dwayne Hooper, and the pressure came from strong safety Anthony Daniels, who was red-dogging on the play. Two good safeties, frequently a key to a defense, because the safety, somewhat like uh, a linebacker, you know, has dual responsibility, more responsibility on the running game than do the cornerbacks. So you've got to have some hitters at the safety position, and they have two good ones in Anthony Daniels and Tim Agee. Second down and 10, Rutgers, 44-yard line. LaFrary looks to the air, fires to a wide open Andrews. He's into West Virginia territory, has a first down at the 42-yard line. Second catch this afternoon for Andrews, seven away from the all-time single-season record for most receptions in one campaign. A lot of times that free safety just doesn't seem to be doing anything, but you've got to remember that he's in pass coverage Watch when he takes his, his drop now. This indicates zone coverage as he's going back immediately instead of going across field to cover a receiver. Never gets close to the ball carrier, but you see what he does in that secondary with his deep drop and then reaction to the football. The Prairie fires incomplete. One of the few times you'll see Baker just drop the ball. He was trying to run perhaps before he had the big skin in his possession. Second and 10 for the Scarlet Knights. West Virginia leading 35-7. 12-26 left in the football game. Second down and 10 for Rutgers. The Prairie drop back in trouble. And he somehow gets it away, but the blitz was on. Right cornerback Mike Scott really pegged Jack LaPrairie. Well, the fans are calling for a penalty as uh, LaPrairie just threw the ball up. It was a screen forming to the right. The offensive line did not do a good job of faking it. They allowed the people in too quickly. Uh, I believe that the official did not call the Prairie for intentional grounding as the intended receiver was knocked to the ground on the play. I believe it was Hooper. He couldn't get out to catch the football. There were two offensive linemen there. Good call by the official. Third down, 10 Rutgers, West Virginia 42. Of course, you can hit the intended receiver behind the line of scrimmage. The Prairie to throw, gets a good block from Hooper, gets away from one man in trouble. And a wave of black shirts call a team meeting on Jack LaFerry's body that time. Well, it makes it so much easier when you know a team is behind by four touchdowns and has to throw the football. And now those defensive people just tee off. Everybody's coming. You see number 37, the linebacker coming. All of the defensive linemen, another linebacker coming from the other side, and they all converge on LaPrairie. One, two, three, four, five people. Go down, Jack. He's a hustler. He's a fighter. Sometimes you've got to go down. Yeah, you know, that's I just guess, pointless. I guess for your help. But remember against Reggie uh, White a couple weeks back, how mm -hmm. he took a couple of hits and got up, and Coach Dick Curl said to us, I don't know why he got up sometimes, <laughs> but... Inexperience. Got the, uh, no, I don't think so. I think I would well, say toughness. I know, toughness and heart and everything else. Thomas stammered over to try to get the uh, West Virginia coaching staff under control. In any event, Rutgers will have to punt it away in relax. fourth and 15. He's got four touchdowns. It's time to relax, tell him, that, that coach on the sideline. Steve Newberry drops back deep for West Virginia this time. 
and a fair catch was called and made at the 12-yard line. Now you can't run with the football after you call for that fair catch. So the Mountaineers will start from their own 12-yard line with visions of another bowl game in their minds and a 28-point victory for a 28-point lead at this point on time, 11.37 to play. Bruce Beck, Sam DeLuca back at Mountaineer Field, Morgantown, West Virginia. And the Mountaineers continue to lead this football game. And on first down, Pat Randolph gets the call. The freshman gets a couple of yards. He's stopped by Tyrone Stowe. Let me tell you, Sam, what, what Jimmy Dumont told me the other day about Tyrone Stowe. He said, Jim, do you think Stowe's going to be a good football player? He said, he's so much bigger and he's so much quicker than I was as a freshman. I think he's going to be great. And, and when a guy is as good as Dumont, sometimes you think, well, he'd say, well, he needs time. He's going to become a decent ball player. But as unselfish as Dumont is, he says Stowe is just going to be marvelous. Well, a good football player, that's one of the marks. They're never, never the petty jealousies and so on. And all they try to do is help others because they're secure within themselves. Let's take another look at Tyrone Stowe, the freshman linebacker, inside linebacker, responsibility for the run and the pass, fill the hole. Ooh, he fills it. Fills it, pretty good tackle. Could have been a little bit higher, perhaps. He's happy with himself. He's pleased. He gets a four on that one. He's quicker and perhaps stronger than Dumont was as a freshman. Well, Dumont was small as a freshman, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Hostetler rolls out, still looking. Doesn't want to step over the line. Dumps it across the middle. It's incomplete. And Dan Errico was all over Willie Drury. Errico has just played a great football game. Yes, he has. He had plenty of time to release that football. Let's take one more look at Tyrone Stowe and see how we would grade him on this play. Remember, remember what the quarterback was doing now. He's rolling out. He's moving in that direction. He obviously has responsibility for covering the fullback, number 36, Ron Wolfley, on the play. He's all over him. Hey, don't, you're not going to get away from me. And when necessary, put his hands on him, which he shouldn't have done. Fourth down, Steve Superick punts the ball away. Erico makes the catch at his own 48. Fumbles the ball, Rutgers recovers. Barry Bukowski recovered the fumble. And Rutgers will have the ball at their own 45 or so. First, on several occasions, we've mentioned the presence of many scouts from different bowls here to scout West Virginia. I wonder what they're looking for. I wonder if, uh, aside from the fact that they want to see a good football team and they want to see an impressive victory, I wonder if the quarterback isn't a key factor, if they don't want to see Hostetler throw the bomb. And certainly he has pleased them today to create some excitement for their bowls. On first down, LaFrary drops, looks, fires, complete. First down, Rutgers 39-yard line, and it's Andrew Baker. I have to think you're right. Uh, that's why Doug Flutie and Boston College are such a great bowl of practice, because he's so exciting that every bowl wants to have somebody like that. Should I imagine they want good football teams, but also exciting football teams, and there's no doubt that the pass, or the bomb anyway, is what the home run is to a baseball. Fans love the pass, don't they? First and 10, Rutgers, 39 of West Virginia. And the handoff is to Vernon Williams, and he carries a couple of people with him, including Derek Christian. And Vernon Williams has played as well as he has all season long. Yeah, and you ask why a running play when you're down 35-7 to in the fourth quarter with 9.41 remaining, because if you don't run it occasionally, those defensive people just tee off as they did on the last series of downs, and they don't give your quarterback an opportunity to throw the football anyway. So you've got to remain balanced and unpredictable. Williams this afternoon has 13 carries for 61 yards. He is being attended to by a couple of Rutgers people at the 45-yard line. He has worked very hard. The Owls of Temple fly into Rutgers Stadium next week for the finale of the 1983 football season. Sam and I will be there to bring you all the exciting action next Saturday night at 10.30, Sunday morning at 9 a.m. right here on Madison Square Garden Cable Vision. Final game next week for Jim Dumont and a host of other Rutgers seniors. The Prairie threw this one away and it's incomplete and Travis Curtis is just talking to himself and saying, I should have had that interception. It would have been his first. He's a freshman from Potomac, Maryland. Well, the Prairie had his receiver. He just overthrew him, and it should have been intercepted. A, an injured player on the uh, field, a directors player. Is it the Prairie? Yes, it is. And I don't 
I don't think so. No, it is not LaPrairie, it is Beleza. And it looks like a leg injury. He seems to be pointing to his ankle, which is always, no. No, when they bend it like that, it's normally a knee that he's examining. And what he's testing for there is some movement in the knee. When the ligaments are gone and the orthopedic surgeon grabs it like that, he can tell if it's unusually loose and if there is indeed a chance of ligament damage, which of course is what they're concerned about. The fact that he's bending it like that is somewhat of a good indication. He's obviously in pain, isn't he? Good football player. West Virginia leading Rutgers 35-7, 9.28 left in the fourth quarter. And here's a look at the passing statistics so far today. Both teams with about the same completions, but Look and, at the yardage difference. You know, and uh, I had mentioned before, in all of their winning efforts this season, West Virginia has averaged 23 attempts a game, which is, I think, ideal. When, uh, when Miami had their good years, the Miami Dolphins, Greasy would throw about 20 times a game, 20 to 22 times a game. Third down, six, Rutgers, 35-yard line of West Virginia. The prairie rolls out and he is sacked. The dancing man is Scott Dixon of Canton, Ohio. And don't think the second string defensive unit doesn't enjoy the opportunity to show that they can play football. And he's a defensive end, an outside linebacker. They know that LaPrairie is going to pass, so they're sending both of their outside linebackers attempting to put pressure on him rather than drop into coverage, and it has been successful here in the second half. LaPrairie has not had time to throw. Gary Lisko back in punt formation at his own 44. Good punt. Out of bounds at the 14-yard line. And that's where West Virginia will have it. First and 10. You know, Gary Liska and Tom Angstead, I was talking to both of them the other day. Kickers are, are not what I would call strange. I would say unique. They have different patterns. They do different things to psych themselves up for every game. And what Liska and Angstead do for every game is listen to music. They listen to Don McLean's American Pie. Remember that song? They listen to that every single game to get psyched that for some reason they had a good first game and they stuck with that theme throughout the season. And they also listen to the Cars' first album. Gary Mullen catches that pass from Hostetler. Good for a West Virginia first down. Dan Errico back on the coverage. I always knew that the kickers were strange, but American Pie? You know, they, they, they share the same apartment, Sam. They room together on the road. They both can't put food down before a game. And uh, they've become very close. And they're, they were throwing footballs one day in practice. I, I was asking what they were doing. They were saying, just trying to stay loose. <laughs> First and 10, West Virginia. And straight up the middle, Wolfley. He gets a yard at the most. Second down and about eight. Lionel Washington, good range for a defensive end. Let's watch him, number 99. Is that the big tight end blocking on him? Well, the big tight end does a job on Lionel that time. No, it wasn't. It was number 76, I'm sorry. An offensive tackle, and he just overpowered and overwhelmed Washington. Hostetler rolls out, fires, and it's caught. Wayne Brown from Somerville, New Jersey. Makes the catch. Carl Howard back in coverage for Rutgers. Brown, West Virginia University's premier receiver. Last year at 14 catches, this year 15, but he certainly can't match up with uh, Hollins. They say he's the premier receiver, but I would say Hollins is because of the tremendous season he's having. But don't take anything away from Brown's ability to play. Great to have depth, isn't it? Boy, isn't it. None of their receivers have blazing speed, but uh, certainly they've done an adequate, a more than adequate, an excellent job today. Again, it points up the fact that you don't need the blazing speed if you've got everything else going for you. First and ten. Hostetler back to throw. Fires incomplete. Back on the coverage with John Cummings. 
I wonder if the reason Hostetler in that first string offensive unit is still in the game, leading by four touchdowns with and seven throwing on to go, first down. Go is because there's so many bowl scouts yep. here. I wonder if that, that changes you your remember, philosophy a little Remember bit. the last the game of the 1982 season in Pittsburgh? Dan Marino continued to throw in the second half, even though Pittsburgh had the game locked at that time. And I'm sure that was one of the reasons, and I'm sure the other reason was Marino himself trying to live up to that uh, All-America Heisman Trophy billing. Hand off to Pat Randolph, and Randolph gets six on the right side. But you've got to give uh, Don Shula credit for overlooking the, in uh, the inordinate number of interceptions that Marino threw last year. Shula had the confidence in himself, the fact that, hey, the kid has everything else. He can throw. He's got poise and confidence. If we can get him to throw to the right areas and read coverages, he's going to make it. And certainly it looks as if he's a fine for Miami. West Virginia 50% today on third down conversions. They have a third and six at the own 43 and the handoff to Pat Randolph he breaks it for a first down into Rutgers territory and of course another reason that perhaps the Hostetler was throwing on first down is because they haven't had great success in running with a football so again an attempt to keep the defense off balance and not uh, allowing them to just concentrate on the run he came out throwing on first down you know it's quite fair fellas let's balance it out that's kevin white a junior from casa grande arizona warming up on the sidelines he's a second string quarterback for the mountaineers and last year led the club to victories over east carolina and temple when hostetler was injured Holding called against the Mountaineers, that last play will come back to the 35. Of course, the coaches would never say this, but the sports information di director here at uh, West Virginia is pretty much an indication of what the coaches feel, and they felt that they could have really run up the score against Temple last week. As it was, they won 27-9, and then were criticized for not being as good as Boston College. Hostetler going long for Brown. And he had it momentarily and dropped it. And Erico perhaps helped knock that ball away. Mm, I don't think I would have done a dance if I were Dan Erico on that last play because Brown had him beaten. And the only reason it was not a completion and perhaps a touchdown was the fact that Brown bobbled the football. You can see he's got a few steps on him now. Okay, the ball hangs up a little bit. He slows up, bounces off his shoulder pad. Erico did get a hand on the football, but had Brown not bobbled it, it probably would have gone for a touchdown. Super Ick back in punt formation, and West Virginia gives it back to Rutgers. 30-yard line, Erica, 35, and Erica spins to the 41-yard line. And I wonder if uh, Erico would have done that little dance, and I'm not criticizing him. He was just happy, okay? It was a, a genuine expression of happiness, but you see more and more of that pervading all levels of football, and I wonder if Mark Gastineau doesn't deserve some of the credit, the dubious credit, for that. The Ferry back to throw on first down, fires across the middle, and it's incomplete. Headed for Baker, back in coverage, Tim Agee, there he is. One of the hardest hitting little men in college football leads the team in interceptions and tackles. And he's a free law student. And he's a hitter, all right. Leading tackler, leading the team in interceptions. Coming in today's game, he had 96 tackles and six interceptions for West Virginia. Vernon Williams, straight up the middle. Six minutes and change left in the game. West Virginia leads 35-7. Rutgers next week will have Temple. And second and long yardage. You hand off to your fullback. People say why with only 5.52 remaining because you're not completing many bombs. And hopefully the defense is looking for the long pass, loosening up, and perhaps you can get a first down on the handoff to the fullback. Here's LaFrary back to throw, pressure's on, and he goes down back at the 32. Well, nobody picked him up that time. He just came free on LaFrary. Scott Dixon again, that's his second sack of the afternoon. And he's a second string outside linebacker, as Sam mentioned. But when you get into the football game, you can't ask a player to do anything but give his all, and that's what Dixon's doing. Well, he's, he's 
certainly has done that. But somebody on that Rutgers offensive unit, if not a lineman, one of the backs of the tight end should have picked him up. He came free on the prairie. Gary Lusker back at his 18-yard line. Willie Drury deep for the Mountaineers. And will we see a return? No. Fair catch, 31-yard line, and West Virginia has the ball. Sam, I, I think at this point it's apropos to talk about pride because Rutgers at this point of the football game looks like they're out of it, down four touchdowns with 4.53 to play. And the one thing you have to say about this Rutgers football team is we see them every week, and sometimes they're playing some pretty good teams, and they never put their heads down and never quit. It has to be a reflection on that man right there, Frank Burns. Okay, he doesn't say very much on the sidelines. He's not all over people, but I think that he's instilled that, that need to win, the will to win, the pride that you were talking about in his players. First down and... Straight up the middle, the handoff to Tommy Bowman. He gets maybe a yard on the play, and that's all. You know, uh, Don Nealon was talking yesterday about uh, overscheduling. He said that it was counterproductive. He felt that West Virginia was very lucky to be doing as well as they have done over the last few years, uh, despite a tough ske uh, schedule. And there you see, he's finally taking Hostetler out of the football game. I would say it's about time with 421 remaining and West Virginia leading by 35 to 7. But we, we'll get back to that scheduling uh, conversation okay. in a moment. Second and nine, Kevin White's first pass of the afternoon. It's incomplete, intended for Gary Mullen. And I asked uh, Don Nealon if he thought that perhaps Rutgers had overscheduled themselves, and he was reluctant to comment on it, but the feeling I got is that he thought that perhaps they had indeed, you know, overscheduled themselves and created some problems for themselves, you know, putting people like Tennessee and Auburn and Alabama on the uh, schedule. Sacks, a big discrepancy. Rutgers won for nine yards, and you see what West Virginia has done to Jack LaPrairie. Hard to evaluate a quarterback when he's been sacked seven times, isn't it? Back to throw, White's pass incomplete. You've got to assume that if he's been sacked seven times, he's been pressured at least twice as often. There's Haas Detler. Haas on the sidelines finishes the ball game. 17 of 27, 278 yards, three touchdowns. Only one pass was intercepted. He ran for a touchdown, three carries, 22 yards, and he played a heck of a football game. You take out that interception, and it's just about a perfect day. Steve Superick will punt for West Virginia. And Dan Errico will wait for it with 4.04 to play. Errico fumbles the ball and out of bounds. Rutgers will keep possession. That's happened twice to Rutgers today. Both times they came out uh, on the long end of it. Going you know, back other, to Nealon's yeah, statement that, that you made yesterday. earlier, <laughs> I, I, uh, my understanding was a little bit different than yours. I, I thought on the question dealing with the schedule that he was saying that we did the same thing as Rutgers. We both upgraded our schedules, but we've just performed and had the victories, and they haven't. And if they would have had the victories, my interpretation was, and the schedule is fine. So the well, difference but yet, is several victories. And yet the implication that he had better football players was clear. Okay. He had better football players. The Prairie back to throw and first down, throwing the home run, and it's intercepted. Well, that's why we saw some running plays on the last series of downs. Here's to Steve avoid Newberry something like this. returning the ball into Rutgers territory at the 44-yard line. Newberry, fifth interception this season, his 20th of his career. That's a West Virginia record, and he is considered one of the best ever at West Virginia. Holding against Rutgers will be declined, and West Virginia will get the football back. Newberry, a four-year starter for them. You know, the other thing that uh, Nealon said, he said that losing breeds losing, and winning breeds lo uh, winning, obviously, and that's why the overscheduling, you know, can present a problem. 44-yard line, first down and some movement on the left side of that Rutgers line. Well, my interpretation is different than yours, and that's what makes horse racing. I felt that he was just saying that his schedule was similar, but because he had the achievement, they've been less critical of him. Yeah, but 
wasn't the implication there that West Virginia had better football players than Rutgers at this moment? He felt that perhaps he had he had gotten a little bit of more of the horses, I would say. Yeah. Okay. There's the scoreboard, 340 to play, and the Mountaineers looking to improve to 8 and 2. Kevin White in the ball game at the 49-yard line of Rutgers. The hand drop to Tom Bowman, and Bowman gets seven off the right side. Bowman, a junior from Portsmouth, Ohio, with the Ohio State High Jump champion in 1980. And he has been hampered by a broken hand this season. You can see that left hand very heavily taped. Now there's a good way to keep warm, jump up and down. Well, the rabbit coat isn't that hurting. Helps. Yeah. <laughs> I think our cameraman is also trying to stay warm. 43-yard line of Rutgers, second down, and about eight. And West Virginia keeps the ball on the ground. And again, it's Tommy Gray this time well, carrying the football. First, I've been waiting for you to talk about it all day. We've been following rivers for the last three weeks. Which river are we on this week? This week we are on the Monongahela. Okay. You did that much better than I did. <laughs> did George Wiesak. <laughs> I practiced. Monongahela. Oh. Third down, seven yards to go for West Virginia. They lead 35-7. They've been in control the entire way. They led 21-7 at halftime. And Tommy Gray from Somerville, New Jersey, dances for a couple yards. Barry Bukowski made the stop. I was looking at West Virginia players of the past, you know, some of their great players. And, of course, Danny Bugs played here, and Jim Braxton, and Darryl Talley last year, and Tom Pridemore, and you talked about Oliver but Luck Sam in the Huff. Open. But Bruce Sam Huff, is, Go back Sam Huff is the, is the one that era. really caught my eye. Fourth and four, West Virginia, 37-yard line of Rutgers. And straight up the middle goes Tommy Gray, short of the first down, and Rutgers will take over. Well, this, again, this is just a courtesy at this point to keep the football on the ground, although obviously in that situation a run wasn't a bad call. But I think they have enough points at 35 uh, to 7 with 153 remaining. Big ball weekend coming up soon, and you know, this... The games of this week will certainly have a big impact on the overall bowl picture, and I'll touch on that in just a moment, tell you a couple of big games this week and what it could change or what it could accomplish for the excitement of postseason college action. Jack LaFerry dumps it off to Albert Smith. It's incomplete. The big games of this week, Auburn, Georgia, for the Southeastern Conference Championship, and, of course, a Sugar Bowl bid. Notre Dame, Penn State, if Notre Dame wins that football game, they will probably go to the Fiesta Bowl. Miami of Florida against Florida State. That's really the key game of the weekend because if Miami wins, they'll probably play Nebraska in the Orange Bowl with the national championship on the line. If they lose, it could change five or six bowls in the process. The Prairie hands the ball off to Vernon Williams, who's had a great afternoon, and he's into West Virginia territory at the 47-yard line. He blocked by Lamont Green, number 68, now in at offensive guard for Rutgers. And of course, another thing that uh, Coach Nealon said yesterday, which really isn't new or unique, but you rarely hear coaches talk about it or say it so explicitly, he says that he puts his good players, his most talented players, on defense first. And if they can't make it on defense, he then switches them to offense. And, of course, Paul Brown, I guess, made that statement back in the late 50s or the early 60s, and it was somewhat of a revelation at that time, rather unusual, because up until that time, everybody always put their best players at offensive halfback or at, uh, at wide receiver, primarily at the halfback spot. But it takes more talent, I think, to play defense. There, there's... No substitute for size and especially speed and quickness. Gunny LaPrairie leads Rutgers out a minute 36 to play. West Virginia leads by four touchdowns. LaPrairie to throw. Gets away from one man. Still trying to wrestle himself away, but finally goes down. Quarterback is only as good as his supporting cast. In this case, he is only as good as his pass protection, which has been sorely lacking in the second half of this football game. Chris Genther made the tackle for the Mountaineers. Under a minute and a half to play.
LaPerry with time this time. Now he rolls out of the pocket and he goes down. A loose football. And I believe the play was blown dead. Yeah, he was in a very precarious, dangerous position. His feet had slid out from under him. Looked like he was supporting himself on his right arm. And that was a time for him to go down. But watch the pass rush. Now, again, Rutgers has put in a lot of substitute players here to give them some experience. Number 70, number 68. Well, of course, he's a senior, Lamont Green. But a lot of new people there. Look him support. Get down, Jack. Sounds like a dance, doesn't it? What? <laughs> a cold, late autumn afternoon. And West Virginia has simply dominated this football game. And they will improve to 8-2 and two on the season. And Rutgers, feeling some of the frustration now, they will drop to 3-7. and seven. It has been a long afternoon for the Scarlet Knights. We want to thank some people involved. We want to thank Mike Balwig, the Sports Information Director at West Virginia, and his assistant Joe Bozak, the Athletic Director, Freddie Schaus, head coach Don Nealon, and his entire staff up here in the booth. Tom Walsh and Lou Shane spotting. John Bolin also helping us upstairs. The Prairie back to throw in trouble, scrambles out of the pocket, and he goes down. Also to Jeff Sadow and Roger Schwing. Kenny Friedman. And he forgot Kenny our Friedman. stat name. Kenny Friedman. I won't forget him. That because his back was turned to it. <laughs> and that should Boy, do it with just, five seconds to play. You have to feel sorry for the Prairie in this situation. He just never had a chance in this last quarter. Under a rush constantly. Thanks to Bob Smith, Sports Information Director at Rutgers. To Tom Peters, Associate Athletic Director. Bud Heilman, Assistant Athletic Director. Fred Greninger, Athletic Director. And Coach Frank Burns and his staff. Five seconds left. Webster